Youth Hockey Hub presents Friday Night Ice, brought to you by Tradition Companies. Top teams facing off in big games under the lights. Friday Night Ice, the state of hockey's newest tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, welcome to historic Bloomington Ice Garden, the place they call big. And if we got a big matchup on tap for you tonight, Friday Night Ice, a top 10 Class A battle between the Northfield Raiders and the Slate St. Cloud Cathedral Crusaders. I am one half of the Friday Night Ice team. My name is Peter Odney. Welcome to Big. I've got my partner here, Tony Scott. Tony, what can we expect? Let's start with Northfield. What are you expecting from the Raiders tonight? Well, the Raiders come in. They're playing Cathedral tonight, the team that ended their season last year over at Mariucci. Uh, in a consolation uh, game, uh, which ended up Cathedral up going and winning the consolation championship. Uh, they remember it. Cathedral barely remembers it. That'll tell you a little <laughs> bit about something about tonight's game. It should tell you something about tonight's game. A bit of a rivalry game here between a pair of Class A powers. Northfield coming into tonight's game with a record of 13-1-2, riding a seven-game win streak, and most of the offense coming from the, the trio of Jake Geiger, Cam Kaiser, and Caden Munson. They've combined for 116 points so far. Tony, what can you tell me about that trio of players? I would call them physical, skilled, and aggressive. Those would be the three words that describe these guys. You're going to see a very high tempo first line out of the Raiders tonight. And defensively, the return of Ty Frank cannot be understated. The two-time varsity starter for the Raiders. He's got 60 career points. He missed all except for six games this season with a back injury. What does his return mean for this team? Well, it re it's, it's a good sign. He probably hurt his back uh, mowing grass this past <laughs> uh, summer. But he's finally back. He's healthy. He's been a dynamic player. We saw him in the Bantam Elite League when he was younger. He's one of the better defensemen that Northfield's had in their program ever. He'll be a fun kid to watch tonight. Certainly. The record in one goal games, 3-0-2 for Northfield this season. What do you think the secret is to Northfield's ability to get out of one goal games either with a win or a tie? I think it's confidence. you got guys, they played in the state tournament last year. They know what it takes to get back there and to face normal opponents like they've had this year. They have the confidence to beat them. You'll see that here tonight against them. North, Northfield certainly familiar with running roughshod over opponents coming out of the Big Nine Conference. Now let's hear more about this merry band of outlaws from Northfield. Yeehaw! Make no mistake, Northfield, Minnesota is a hockey town, a puck paradise situated halfway between the tiny hamlets of Waterford and Dundas. It was here in August of 1876 that the famed band of outlaws known as the Jesse James Gang met their match. This year's Northfield Raiders boys hockey team sees itself as both a group of ambassadors for their hometown and as a swashbuckling band of skaters and scorers that also mirrors the rustlers and robbers that dared to take on the colony along the Cannon River. We kind of have a big name in the Big Nine right now. I feel like everyone wants a piece of us. Especially in our conference and section, we're kind of the team to beat now. And I think over the past years, we've I don't know, developed the outlaw name, which has been really fun. So The current class of the Big Nine Conference. The Raiders have become accustomed to running roughshod over their area opponents. Despite the local cachet, the Raiders still find themselves on the outside looking in when it comes to being counted among the state's Class A elite. They're like bigger, bigger hockey towns and we're kind of just small town Northfield. Like you don't, not many people really know that much about us. I understand why they would maybe get more respect than us, but I think that we can play with them. And if we do, when we do, I think we'll be able to surprise some people. In this week's edition of Friday Night Ice, the Raiders will get a chance at revenge against St. Cloud Cathedral, the team that sent the Raiders home during last season's state tournament consolation round. Kind of the rematch. You know, we lost to them at Mariucci last year, and I think everyone was a little ticked off because that was our last game, and uh, we want a piece of them. I think it's gonna be super physical. It'll be a really good game. I think if we stay on our heads and play the right way, I think we'll be able to show everybody what we're made of, not just St. Cloud. By facing the Crusaders, Class A state champs in 2019, the Raiders will take a shot at victory and legitimacy on the big, bright stage of Friday Night Ice. Our coaches like to say that we're trying to start a dynasty and that it should be expected that we make it to the state tournament every year. 
The past years, I think our program's just been growing and every team from association to high school has just been doing really well. So the work that we've been doing, if we just keep working and keep winning, I think the respect is gonna come. And so we're just gonna keep working on that. But from the get go, it was, hey, we're gonna be a, a source of good in the community. And we got the Keystone program that we give away 10% of our profits. It's, it's such a core value is the philanthropic piece of this. And whether it's Hope Kids or ETS or, or Whispers of Hope, the Grief Club, um, basically it's set out that this is something that it's a part of what you do and, and everyone has a lot of buy-in and is very excited to do it. With an injection, we're usually trying to minimize inflammation or block a nerve to prevent it from sending a signal somewhere that causes you pain. So we're not actually masking any of the symptoms or the problem, but we are trying to improve the inflammation or block the pain signal so that people can feel relief. Since 1933, three generations of Kozlaks have wined and dined Minnesotans with great food and impeccable service. Located in historic Northeast Minneapolis, Jack's is open for happy hour, dinner, and a tasty weekend brunch. With a world-class bar and a spectacular outdoor patio, your dining experience will be both memorable and delicious. Brew Pub Lots and Lots of Pizzas are made in the heart of America's Dairyland, Kakana, Wisconsin. Every Brew Pub pizza is made with the highest quality meat and veggie toppings. Them bombarded with over half a pound of award-winning Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. Snag a slice of brew pub pizza at the concession stand or enjoy a whole pizza conveniently located in the frozen pizza section of your local grocery store. Brew pub, lots and lots of pizzas, the ingredients for a great time. From the get-go, it was... Welcome back to hey, Bloomington gonna, High Garden. Yeah, a wonderful story about the Northfield Raiders, but now let's meet Keystone their program. opponent, the St. Cloud Cathedral Crusaders, who entered tonight's game with a record of 14-4-1, ranked number three in the state. Tony, you told me off-air, I've seen these guys a lot, so give us your uh, synopsis on it's the a, Crusaders. It's a lot like Northfield, which makes this an interesting game. they got a top-line, Dwinnell is one of the best players I've seen all year. I think he's the most underappreciated, unheralded seniors in the state. If you need a game-winning goal in overtime, I'm calling it now. The Bucci Goss Challenge, take <laughs> Dwinnell, take Dwinnell. He scores big goals and big moments, did last year in the section final. And then one of your all-time favorites, I'm talking since sports. <laughs> Mr. John, John Hirschfeld. Johnny Hirschfeld, Mr. Right? John Hirschfeld, just one of the several names for the Crusaders who can put points on the board. Dwinnell, Hirschfeld, Gillespie, Sturm, Gebhardt, which begs the question, Tony, why is the St. Cloud Cathedral power play hovering at about 15% with the talent on this roster? That's not high enough. You know, you'd think I would bring up some mystery of Loch Ness, but I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> they score so often five on five, they kind of get bored once the power play comes around. There's my excuse. I'm making excuses <laughs> for the Catholics right now. Well, I don't know if it's got anything to do with a monster in Scotland or just not being able to find the back of the net. I, ironically, Dwinnell leads, I believe, the section at least with five shorthanded goals. So the Crusaders finding a way to get it done shorthanded, but not maybe on the power play. Let's talk about the defense for a second. Maybe not as big as some other powerful teams, but players like Sturm and Gebhardt, they're so skilled and swift with the puck. Well... If you look, if you're studying their defensive numbers, especially the last month, their goaltender Hanson been out injured. Tonight he makes his return, so their defensive numbers will definitely go down, making it very difficult for Northfield to get the puck in the, in the net tonight. So I, I expect it to be a lower scoring two to one, three to two type game. All right, the Crusaders with arguably their best team since their 2019 squad went on a run to the state title. Let's learn a little bit more about the hockey power based in the middle of Minnesota. Pantheon of hockey kingdoms in Minnesota, St. Cloud finds itself in a sort of puck purgatory. Not quite the metro area, not quite the harbors of Lake Superior, and not quite the storied Iron Range. The players at St. Cloud Cathedral, however, don't let a lack of geographic significance stop them from believing wholeheartedly in their program's place in the state's prep hockey hierarchy. 
St. Cloud's just a nice area to play in. You know, it's a big city, so there's a lot of people, a lot of fans. I mean, obviously in the whole state, you play with uh, who you're growing up with, but uh, even getting a few guys from not just St. Cloud, you know, like SMS TMA guys, but it's just really special to play with uh, the guys you grew up with and go to school with. As enthusiastically as the players tout their hockey heritage, including a Class A state championship in 2019, they revere their role as mantle carriers for Catholic school athletics. I think it's, yeah, for us it's more of a pride thing and not really worrying about other people uh, chirping about it or hating about it. Say like being in Catholic school, that'd be like a challenge because teams hate us more, but we kind of like it. There's a certain history that follows this group of Crusaders, many of whom watched the 2019 squad's dominant run to a state championship with wide eyes. According to them, the team's state crown brought immense pride to not only Cathedral's student body, but to St. Cloud hockey as a whole. Already the state tournament is just already fun to go to, but then to see your team, you know, just be in it and competing and obviously then win it is just, yeah, unbelievable. You see that like football and baseball are kind of the bigger sports out here, but it kind of set the tone that, oh, we can play hockey here too. I just remember being with all my buddies and seeing like my team on the ice where I'm going to my future school and being like, wow, that'd be crazy to play there one day. And then eventually that came true last year, so that was pretty sweet. Under the lights of Friday Night Ice, the Crusaders will face a Northfield team whose season they ended less than a year ago. And the boys in blue and gold seem more than ready to repeat victory. I'm excited. I mean, it's a big seeding game, especially if both teams do end up making it all the way to the tournament. Being able to play against tough competition kind of sets the tone for the, how we should want to play. I like having a good competition that's like kind of like outside of what we usually play because it's just new and it's always just more fun to have to, to have to compete. I think it'll be good. I think we, we usually do good under pressure. We've done good under pressure this year, so I think it should be a good challenge for us. Force for good is kind of just what it sounds like. We, we wake up every day, go to work, try to do the best we can, but also have in the back of our head that we're gonna help people and, and try to make a difference in people's lives. While it's important to do things for others, it's how you go about doing that day in and day out. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about one team. I don't care who you are in this company. Everybody has an opportunity to make a difference and contribute to the whole piece of the pie of what we're trying to do. Stress fractures in the foot, generally the pain is on the top of the foot. There may or may not be much in the way of swelling, but there's usually tenderness, meaning that if you push on the area, it is sore to touch. So if you've had a change in activity, been doing a little bit more and developed pain that hurts when you walk or certainly hurts more when you try to run on it, that's concerning for a stress fracture. Sometimes those can be seen on x-ray, sometimes it requires an MRI to decide whether or not there is a stress fracture. How do we do it? When we step out on the ice, is it just because we're told to? No, we keep working hard and working together, giving 110 at practice and 120 on game day, struggling to overcome and never giving up. We know the jersey matters. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lots of Matzo Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lots of Matzo Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. Think a force for good is kind of Wow, well, thank you to the YHH like. staff for putting we, together we some wonderful B-roll about the Northfield Raiders the and their sort of the outlaw best. type of play and their personalities. Tony, pace of play-wise, how does the outlaw ethos uh, inform the crowd of how Northfield will play tonight? They'll come right at you, just like the, just like the cowboy hats they walked in with today. <laughs> they literally, like half the kids picked up on your story, Peter, and they're like, we're coming as outlaws, we're going to be the outlaws today. They'll come right at you, they'll be very aggressive, they're not gonna dump and chase, they're gonna hold on to the puck, they're gonna make as much many plays as they possibly can. 
a la their coach, Mike Luckcraft. Mike I mean, Luckcraft, the former Golden Gopher. Does he embody that outlaw sensibility? Not at all. If you've ever met him, he's the nicest guy. He's the farthest thing from an outlaw. He probably snickers at the fact that you would consider him an outlaw. You're saying he's so. an in-law. You're More saying of an he's in-law an in-law. Than an outlaw. No question about it. <laughs> well, let's throw it now to Kirsten Krull, who spoke with Coach Luckcraft before today's game about what he expects from his team in the opening period. I'm joined by Mike Luckcraft, head coach of the Northfield Raiders pregame. Coach, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me. Your team dominating so far this season. As you guys are over the halfway point, what are some of the biggest things about your group that has stood out? Yeah, we've got good senior leadership. That's really the first part. A new coming back from last year's team, that would be an important part of the start of our season. And then obviously the opportunity to try to blend some of the young guys into that and develop team chemistry. So, so far, so good. Second half's gonna be important, but it's been good so far. And you guys have a non-conference matchup tonight against St. Cloud Cathedral. What are you expecting to see from that group? Yeah, it'll be a great game. I know we played them last year in the Constellation of the State Tournament. We kind of, uh, both teams are trying to build their schedule, trying to find, you know, top tier teams to play. Um, they're great. I mean, I've watched them, you know, on video a number of times. They have a lot of high-end talent. And uh, so it should be fun. And before this game gets started, how would you like to see your team immediately come out on the ice in that first period? Yeah, you know, there'll be nerves. This is a big environment. So I kind of we're, we're selling it to our team as a little, you know, pre-playoff preparation, potentially pre-state tournament type matchup. So, you know, try to maintain kind of your composure, play at a certain level, but play under control. That's going to be the biggest key for us at the start. Coach, thank you again so much for your time and good luck tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. He's a very unique sport. I would say it, it has this blend of, of toughness and athleticism, but by and large, um, you know, really creativity. You have lots of great athletes, but you don't have lots of great hockey players, and the biggest separator is what they call hockey IQ or intelligence, and that's the ability to really process information quickly, make decisions. I think anytime you're beginning a season or beginning a new sport uh, where maybe you haven't been as well conditioned uh, as you know later in the season or near the end of the year, that's when you're going to be most prone to overuse types of injuries. That's going to be you know sprains and strains and tendonitis and stress fractures. And so I think it's most important to, to kind of slowly uh, ramp up into an activity and build your volume in a stepwise way instead of jumping in all at once. Sophie Whelan was a musician, a three-sport athlete, and a great student who was involved on the student council. In July of 2021, at age 14, Sophie took her own life. Like many teens, her parents and those closest to Sophie had no idea. Shortly after Sophie passed, her family and friends launched Sophie Squad to help more young people with their mental health. One of those closest to Sophie is UMD hockey star Gabby Hughes. Know that people want to listen, people want to support you, the people around you are in your life for a reason because they love you and they care about you. So being able to, to know that can be hard, but really engrave that in your mind and know that people do want to listen. Um, even if you are afraid to talk, there's always somebody there. In two years, Sophie Squad has served over 3,000 students, raised $270,000, and donated 50 to the Children's Hospital for a new inpatient mental health center. Her personality was very bubbly, she was smiley, um, and she always did everything for the people around her. Hockey's a very unique... Wow, again, all I can say is, wow, the imagery that our staff can put together for something blows my mind to this day. Let's get into a little bit about the St. Cloud Cathedral Crusaders. I want to go back to 2019 for a moment, Tony. State champion Crusaders, do you see any similarities between the 2019 state champs and this year's group? Well, we talked a lot about the top line of the current Crusaders, but that line back in the in the golden era 2019, the Killer B defenders, Bogenholm and uh, Bell, mm -hmm. uh, remind me a lot of the defensemen that they have currently with, with Gephardt and Sturm. And then up front, you know, Jack, Jack Smith and Nate Warner. That reminds me a lot of the up front here. There, there's, there's, there, they weren't a one-line team in 19, but <laughs> they got a lot of production. It's very similar to this. Yep, it also and both great coaching staffs, too. The Cathedral had a great coaching staff back there, back then, and now they have a coach... Stocker's doing the same thing, walking the same shoes as the previous coach. And speaking of Coach Stocker, Kirsten Krall uh, mentioned that she was going to uh, excuse Spit me, it out. excuse me. I haven't had nearly enough coffee today. Kirsten Krall caught up with St. Cloud Cathedral head coach Robbie Stocker and asked him a few questions about tonight's game. 
I am joined by St. Cloud Cathedral head coach Robbie Stalker. Coach, thank you so much time, so much for taking some time to chat before tonight's game. You guys are facing off against Northfield as you've scouted that team. What have you noticed and what are you expecting to see as you guys take the ice this evening? Yeah, I watched a couple of the last few games. They've got a lot of depth. Their first line's extremely tough. Um, they play fast physical hockey. They, they really get in your face, so we're expecting a fast-paced physical game. And how can you guys match that energy or even exceed it coming out right away in that first period? Yeah, the hope is to jump on them early. We've done a nice job of starting strong the last few games that we've played. Um, a little bit, you know, different feeling out a new environment here, neutral site. That's not something you like typically face in, in high school hockey to have a neutral site game in the middle of the season. So the hope is that we're, you know, we got here early enough that we're adjusting. We got our bus legs out of us and hopefully we can get a fast start going. You talk about a fast start. What else is going to be key to tonight's game for your squad? Uh, I mean, a lot of it hinges on how our first line plays. Um, they've been kind of the workhorse for our team. Um, but as the season has progressed, we've established a little more depth of scoring. And so with them having a really strong first line, the hope is that, you know, line two and three can can get some production going. Um, that carried us in our last game against Little Falls. They each chipped in a couple. And if we can do that, I think we're going to have a really good shot. Coach, thank you so much for taking some time and good luck tonight. Awesome. Thank you. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together, and whether that's you know helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is, I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. People ask me how they know if they have arthritis. Arthritis is a diagnosis that we make in the office after we check x-rays and exam and take a history from a patient. The most common symptoms of arthritis are some diminished range of motion of a joint, joint stiffness, pain with use and motion, limited activity of what they can do compared to what they used to be able to do with that particular joint. Since 1933, three generations of Kozlaks have wined and dined Minnesotans with great food and impeccable service. Located in historic Northeast Minneapolis, Jack's is open for happy hour, dinner, and a tasty weekend brunch. With a world-class bar and a spectacular outdoor patio, your dining experience will be both memorable and delicious. Why do we do it? When we step out on the ice? Is it just because we're told to? No, we keep working hard and working together, giving 110 of practice and 120 on game day struggling to overcome and never giving up. We know the jersey matters. Sports for good is kind of just what it sounds like. We, we wake up every day, go to work, try to do the best we can, but also have in the back of our head that we're going to help people and, and try to make a difference in people's lives. While it's important to do things for others, it's how you go about doing that day in and day out. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about one team. I don't care who you are in this company. Everybody has an opportunity to make a difference and contribute to the whole piece of the pie of what we're trying to do. In life, we all need a little help to reach our summit. Whatever your summit looks like, it's easier to reach when your body is strong and healthy. At Summit Orthopedics, our team of highly specialized physicians listens to and values every one of our patients. We take a conservative approach to care to get you back to your healthy and active lifestyle. Reach your summit. Summit Orthopedics. Visit summitortho.com to make an appointment today. Hockey is a very unique sport. I would say it, it has this blend of, of toughness and athleticism, but by and large, um, you know, really creativity. You have lots of great athletes, but you don't have lots of great hockey players, and the biggest separator is what they call hockey IQ or intelligence, and that's the ability to really process information quickly, make decisions.
IT band, patellofemoral, stress fractures, and plantar fasciitis are probably the biggest running issues that we see. And I think that depending on the runner, if it's someone who's a really seasoned runner, who's you know, been a runner their whole life, it could be as simple as a shoe change. And that's enough of a subtle difference for them. Or they change distances. I used to be more of a 10K half marathon person, now I want to be a marathoner. And a lot of people just do too much too soon. I think overuse is a big thing. Hockey's a very unique sport. At Hammermade, our Made You Look shirts aren't just superior, they also make getting dressed easy. We favor smart design over passing trends, so your look stays timeless and on point. Season after season, we make the perfect shirt for every day of the week and commitment on your calendar. During this time of year, make sure your loved ones are unwrapping Hammermade. From the get-go, it was, hey, we're gonna be a, a source of good in the community and we got the Keystone program that we give away 10% of our profits. It's, it's such a core value is the philanthropic piece of this and whether it's Hope Kids or ETS or, or Whispers of Hope, the Grief Club, um, basically it's set out that this is something that it's a part of what you do and, and everyone has a lot of buy-in and is very excited to do it. With an injection, we're usually trying to minimize inflammation or block a nerve to prevent it from sending a signal somewhere that causes you pain. So we're not actually masking any of the symptoms or the problem, but we are trying to improve the inflammation or block the pain signal so that people can feel relief. Since 1933, three generations of Kozlaks have wined and dined Minnesotans with great food and impeccable service. Located in historic Northeast Minneapolis, Jack's is open for happy hour, dinner, and a tasty weekend brunch. With a world-class bar and a spectacular outdoor patio, your dining experience will be both memorable and delicious. Brew Pub Lots and Lots of Pizzas are made in the heart of America's Dairyland, Kakana, Wisconsin. Every Brew Pub pizza is made with the highest quality meat and veggie toppings. Them bombarded with over half a pound of award winning Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. Snag a slice of Brew Pub pizza at the concession stand or enjoy a whole pizza conveniently located in the frozen pizza section of your local grocery store. Brew Pub, lots and lots of pizzas, the ingredients for a great time. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together, and whether that's you know helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is, I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. Welcome to Bloomington Ice Gardens. Last installment of Friday Night Ice for the 2023-2024 season. With apologies to Dan Patrick. With Tony Scott, I'm merely Jeff Papas as we get ready to go this one tonight. Northfield to the left, St. Cloud and Cathedral to the right. These teams have history from last season's state tournament. Tony should be a good one. Yeah, they played each other in the uh, consolation, the day after consolation game, which is you never know what you're going to get in one of those games. Cathedral took care of business, ending Northfield season 0-2 barbecue. I think the Raiders, when we were doing the interviews, they remember that game a whole lot more than the, than the Crusaders I would imagine did. so, yes. We're ready to go. We have two great lines for these two teams. We'll talk about the impact they've had on their teams momentarily, but we're ready to go. Northfield in the maroon works left to right, and St. Cloud Cathedral in the gold and blue numerals. Very conveniently going in the opposite direction as we prepare for the opening faceoff. It's Hirschfeld and Geiger, and there's a lot of points in that center circle there. 92 to be exact this season as Northfield wins the faceoff, and they're underway. I'd be surprised if, if their numbers for both teams is under 
Well, we production. I don't have it. I do. Here. You do. What is? Is it six? Well, six it's actually for Northfield it, the uh, the threesome: Geiger, Kaiser, and Munson at forty-eight point seven percent. Okay. And Hirschfeld, Gillespie, and Dwinell, fifty-nine point so seven percent was, of Cathedral's it was points. Below sixty-six. Okay. Yeah, just south, but not by much. No. And Hirschfeld backhands it into the Northfield zone, and going back for it there is Riley. He plays it over to the far side, and then we'll get it back on a. Return pass, opening half minute of this game to Kaiser on the near side and out to center it comes. Finally turned around and played back in by Griffin Sturm. Himself a 14-point player this season for the Crusaders. And now behind the net, it's Hirschfeld wrap around looking to try to center it. And it comes out to center ice and Sturm will have it there. St. Cloud Cathedral will give up possession in their zone and have to come back for it as it's picked up there and played around behind the net by Vince Gebhardt. Now played to center ice and all the way down the ice and that'll be icing the goaltenders for this game for Northfield Max Frank 7 0 and 1 13 goals 157 shots goals against average is a buck 59 91.7 save percentage and two shutouts and for Crusaders it is Nick Hansen 8 0 and 1 18 goals 237 shots he's at 1.89 92 percent save percentage and one shutout so the two goaltenders Undefeated goaltenders at this point in the season. Neither one of them have lost a game. Well, part of the reason Hansen hasn't lost, he's just returned from injury tonight, and he yes. was named captain of the team. You see a C on his brand-new jersey handed out by Gemini Athletic. Yes. Now played behind the net, and the Crusaders trying to clear out Landon Swenson on the far side. Plays it ahead, tipped on out to center, and here's Frank. Over to the near side, as you mentioned, coming back from an injury. He's only got about half a dozen games in. But uh, makes his presence felt every time he's out there. And here's Hayward behind the goal for Cathedral in the right corner with it, trying to play it ahead. It runs to the slot and out to center. And here's a race for it. Caden Johnson, stride for stride with Sam Boardman, brings it into the zone. And Boardman finally took it off him and cleared to center ice. And here's St. Cloud Cathedral's Griffin Sturm playing it back in rink wide behind the net. Frank will set it up there. And Swenson around on the far side, excuse me, uh, Sam Boardman around to the far side. And now Northfield will bring it to center. Tipped ahead by Cashin, but from his own side of center ice. And that is icing. And you look at uh, Northfield, and they've got their goaltenders split right down the middle. Frank and uh, Shimoda, each one of them. <laughs> look at that. 416 minutes this season. That's incredible. Frank, no relation to defenseman Ty Frank, comes in as... The preferred starter at this point, but you never know, you know, heading into the playoffs. You'll learn a lot about his his play tonight because this is one of the toughest opponents that the Raiders will face this year. Cleared pass, Boardman on the near side, and Northfield will play it ahead. Here's Christian Whiteman down the near ring, and he will play it in deep once he reaches the blue line. Sounds like he got and delayed got offside. Yep, and that's what we've got. We're going to get a face off at neutral ice. We played 216 of the first period. No shots on goal. As of yet, most of the action in the state tonight is outstate. Uh, yeah. Really, you know, and in fact, you know, up at uh, in War Road, up in Hockey Day, they're having the alumni game up there tonight between War Road and Rozo. I know. Would that be fun to watch? I know. There's going to be there will be some penalty minutes in that game. <laughs> in a one hour scrimmage, there'll yeah. be a, there'll be some pims. You're not supposed to do that, but uh, they did anyway, I guess. And now here's St. Cloud Cathedral Stern behind the net, and we're going to get a stoppage. Whiteman just got a face full of goalposts. There. Yes, he did. I'm sure he's kind of laughing right now. It's that clean ice, you know. When he yes. when you get back up, it's hard to get back up, and that clean ice and just slid right into the nut. Good craftsman never blames his tools. No. Face off outside the Cathedral blue line, and now it's picked up, and Whiteman will shoot it back in for Northfield behind the net, set up by Max Frank behind the goal. Around to the near side and now back behind the net. Played ahead by Barrett Bradley and he can't get out. Now back in the right corner, Charlie Becker banks it around on the near side for St. Cloud. Now it's caught to center ice and here they come. Sturm, rink wide pass to the right, played in and Northfield will chase after it. Simon and he gets away in the left corner and now will play it back. And then now falling was Ashton Pumper. He tried to skate and he slipped and fell. As St. Cloud Cathedral's Dwinell shoots it over the top. Now Sturm plays it to the near corner, gets it back on a return pass. Sturm swings it over to the right point, and that's Gebhardt trying to play it down. And Dwinell now behind the net as that first line is out. We got a whistle, and we're going to have an interference penalty. Our first call of the game at three minutes and 19 seconds of the opening period, and it is going to put Northfield on a power play.
And Jaeger Wood. So for St. Cloud Cathedral, Jaeger Wood, as we mentioned, this is a, you look at this, these numbers, Tony, and it just seems odd, but they are shorthanded on the average four times or more per game. They've been shorthanded 80 times already this they're season. They're not good Catholics. <laughs> Wood going for Cathedral, and that will put Northfield on the power play, and their power play is lethal. 38.5% on this season. They got 25 power play goals, and they got a shot here with the extra man in the early going. And Cathedral, just the opposite. They're 15% in the power play. That's right. And uh, but the thing about well, Cathedral is, and as this penalty kill evolves, we'll tell you a little bit about it. Statistically, they're as dangerous shorthanded as they are on the power plays. They have nine power play goals and nine shorthanded goals this season as a team. They remind me a lot of Waro's team last year, who was just yeah. dangerous on the PK. Wood in the penalty box for St. Cloud Cathedral as Northfield starts back to center ice, and here's Munson over the line. Munson goes to the backhand, and he fell as he came in front, and the puck is cleared all the way down the ice. Halfway through the first power play, but Northfield 25 out of 65 on the power play this year. It's 38.5%. And now Geiger feeds over to the far side, relayed into the zone by Griffin Kennelly, and it comes right back out to center ice, and you got to watch yourself. As we mentioned, St. Cloud Cathedral dangerous. Even while shorthanded as Riley goes behind the goal for Northfield. Pass over to the left, and now a long pass down the wing is tipped onto the stick of Geiger or as he comes over the line. Ben Geiger, and now carrying on a pass to the near side. Here's Stewart closing. He shoots, and a save made. And it comes off to the far boards as Nick Hansen makes the stop. Now picked up there, and Geiger along the half wall doing a one on one battle there with Griffin Sturm. Nine seconds to go on the power play. Northfield's Riley shoots. Save. Rebound. Ooh, that was close. And it comes to the near corner right as the penalty expires. So Northfield doesn't score, but they do scare him. And the puck comes off to the far side. Now Ben Geiger trying to center it loose in the circle. And finally picking up there, Jager Wood, fresh out of the penalty box. And he clears it ahead, and that will be icing on St. Cloud Cathedral. We have a television timeout, I do believe. So we'll take a break and come back with more from Bloomington. No score on Friday Night Ice. But from the get-go, it was, hey, we're going to be a, a source of good in the community. And we got the Keystone program that we give away 10% of our profits. It's, it's such a core value is the philanthropic part, piece of this. And whether it's Hope Kids or ETS or, or Whispers of Hope, the Grief Club, um, basically, it set out that this is something that it's a part of what you do and, and everyone has a lot of buy-in and is very excited to do it. With an injection, we're usually trying to minimize inflammation or block a nerve to prevent it from sending a signal somewhere that causes you pain. So we're not actually masking any of the symptoms or the problem, but we are trying to improve the inflammation or block the pain signal so that people can feel relief. Since Back in Bloomington, now you look at the Northfield bench and, and Mike Luckraft, the food and head soap. coach, the non-bandit, as uh, Tony referred to him in the pregame show. You actually are forced to listen to that. I apologize. <laughs> hey, it was very insightful as I as I listened to you and uh, and Peter did go you, through almost all the stats that I had already compiled I and I'm just burning them off one by one on the pregame show. Did you actually see the stories? I haven't even seen the. No, stories. I did not see we the story. Our butts off of them. I haven't seen it. They were finished today at like three o'clock. I hear they're gorgeous, them but uh, I haven't had a chance to take a look. I'm still trying to live down the highlight reel on YouTube from the uh, holiday event. Here's a shot from the faceoff right on. And a save made off Andrew Winter. And uh, for those that don't know, on the YouTube page, Ooh. oh, we got a whistle. And they, oh, the door came open in the right corner. And that's uh, <laughs> more than a little bit dangerous. So we'll get a face off in the cathedral zone to the right of Nick Hansen. I'm sorry to laugh, but if you only knew who was next to the door, it was the infamous Lynn Bellis. And oh. the door came oh, loose. Gosh. and. Oh, my god! I did not see. Her one there. job is to shut that door. <laughs> She's got one job. There's <laughs> a nice thing against the Crusaders. 
But uh, I think it'll be shut the rest of the night. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, pretty sure it's safe. The uh, tradition tournament in uh, Prior Lake this year. I was at death's door, so the top ten goals that you put on YouTube were uh, an exercise in how to call a game with laryngitis. And, oh uh, yeah. When I saw the video get posted, I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> Well, Poor Jeff. Because <laughs> you told me before, we don't care how it sounds, right? So it's a <laughs> it works great. It was great. <laughs> it was a blast, I'll tell you that. As Hirschfeld plays it in, and that's going to be stopped in a half wall. Pass to center ice, intended for Kaiser, picked up by Hirschfeld, and he plays to the blue line. Now back in the Northfield zone, Jake Geiger. And a shove there for Winter. Now played over to the near side, and Riley gains the blue line, a rising shot, and a glove catch by Hanson, who can't get it out of his glove, and we get a face-off. Uh, the, what I've noticed so far is the Northfield defensemen are extremely athletic. Bridger Riley's a multi-sport athlete. You got Ben Geiger, who's one of the best freshman defensemen in the state. And then you have Ty Frank, who I said earlier in the pod, broadcast that I think he's probably one of the best defensemen this school's ever seen. So that's going to pay dividends for them, not just tonight, but for the rest of the season. Yes, having him back in the lineup just in time for the stretch run is always good. And he's got the puck now in the right corner, does Frank. Goes behind the net, pursued by his opposite number, Johnson. And a collision there and the boards in the corner as Cole Wong flew in. Now controlled by Northfield's Rand on the near side to center ice. And finally poked back into the center circle and controlled by Wong, who will circle back to his blue line. And now picked off there and brought in offside. So we're going to face off at neutral ice. 10-10 to go in the opening period. Speaking of D, look at, on the other side, Griffin Sturm, one of the best yep. sophomore defensemen in the state, had the game-winning goal last year in the uh, section final to send the Crusaders back to state the first time since 2019. And, of course, we know what that 2019 team did. Yes, so we do. You're into uh, omens. Now into the corner, the two sevens go again, Johnson and Frank, and they battle behind the net. And now it comes loose to the circle, and finally Northfield's cash, and will pick it up and carry to center ice. Shoots it in and then chases after it, but Northfield is changing, so he is one against the world. Now behind the net, and a rink-wide pass will bank out to center ice, and chasing it down will be Boardman. It goes wide of the net, and icing is called with 9.39 left in the first period. Not a lot of flow yet. No. Teams are fresh. Defensemen are on lockdown mode. You got two good goaltenders with good numbers. It's going to be tough to get a goal. I said in the pregame, it's a 2-1-3-2 two, two type of hockey game. Grand Rapids has scored first at home against Maple Grove tonight. Of course, Friday night used to be the night, Tony, when you'd have the Iron Range Conference games. Oh, yeah. And uh, those were the big nights. Now over the line, a shot and a stick save there off of Boardman. Comes off to the far boards and now poked out to center. And here's a two-on-one over the line. St. Cloud Cathedral, a shot right on and a save made as the puck came in. And I believe that was Petrosky that took yep. that shot. Yes, 27. Over to the far side, O'Neal drops to the right point. Here's a shot that deflects wide to the near side. Caden Johnson banks to the point. Hayward shoots, and that goes wide. Off to the far boards, and after it there is O'Neal behind the net. It comes around to the near side. Finally banked off the wall, but held there on the half boards by Hayward right on the hash mark. It goes back behind the net. And finally, Pumper clears around on the far side, chases after it, having a tough time, finally plays it to the point and played back down and winds up in the left corner as the Crusaders finish a change. Cleared out to center ice and Hayward leaves it and it's controlled now by Hirschfeld. 52 points worth for him. 16 goals over the line. He comes at speed, played it right through Boardman. Shoots and a save made by the goaltender, Frank. That was a good one. Out to center, and here comes Jake Geiger. He's over the line. He tried to shoot through a screen. Nothing doing there as Rosencrans blocks the shot. Now back comes Cathedral. Explosive stuff as it comes out to center and down the near wing. It's Gillespie in. He's battling against Riley, who falls but clears it to the near side. And Cam Kaiser out to center ice. A little bit too far for Jake Geiger in the zone. And now with eight minutes to go in the period, Cathedral's Gillespie has it at center ice. Pass to the right, and stepping right in the lane was Jake Geiger out to center ice. And now Geiger at the red line will carry over the line. Comes to the far circle, takes the shot that's blocked behind the net. He stays with it, though. Centers it. It comes right up the slot. And here's Johnson for St. Cloud Cathedral playing it into the center circle. And finally picked up there. And there's a deke leader as Jake Geiger is hammered to the ice. And now... St. Cloud Cathedral over the line, a rising shot, and a glove catch by Frank off of Dwinnell. 
The heavyweights came out to play on that yes. shift. Gillespie decletes Kaiser. I mean, this kid can play football, baseball. He can play any sport he wants, but I'm not sure he's been knocked to the ground or knocked to the ice like he just got knocked to there. Not very often. I would wager face-off coming up to the right of Frank. 7.32 to go and a scoreless first. Here's a shot as they get the puck to the trigger man, Swenson. And it comes over to the far side. Munson trying to clear. And he winds up with the puck right back at his feet. He's got it now in the left corner. And just plays it up the wall as Cathedral can't cycle out. Now behind the net, it's controlled. And Geb or check that, uh, Barrett Bradley playing it ahead and out to center ice. That's picked off. And here's Sturm over the line. He flips it in deep and then will... Head back out. Now Northfield, a long pass. It's going to be held in by Sturm at the blue line. Dances around one. Comes to the circle. Takes a shot, or centered it, rather, and comes all the way through. Now it's uh, Cole Wong on the far side, playing it down behind the net. And Cathedral trying to set up Swenson, and it comes through to the far side. Here's a drive, and that goes wide. Oh, a weird carom off the inboards there as Wong nearly created havoc in the crease as Cashin plays it in for Northfield. 6.38 to go in the period, and the puck now comes to the circle. Here's a shot. Oh, and a good stop through traffic against Ashton Pumper, who snuck in there and got a good chance right on the dot. Now it comes to the right point, and here is Stewart shooting. That's blocked in front, now cleared back out to center. And Michael Stewart for Northfield will regain possession, play it in ahead, and Sturm backtracks for it for Cathedral. Just over six minutes to play now in Period one as it comes to center ice. Carter Simon tried to step up and it winds up going all the way down the ice. Back into the Northfield zone. Cleared off to the wall. And now then throw back into the corner as the Crusaders will try to dig it out. Petrosky feeding the right point and then it's picked up by Griffin Kennelly. He plays it ahead. It's out of play with 5.53 to go in the period. We'll take a timeout here from Bloomington Ice Gardens. This is Friday Night Ice on the Youth Hockey Hub. Hockey is a very unique sport. I would say it, it has this blend of, of toughness and athleticism, but by and large, um, you know, really creativity. You have lots of great athletes, but you don't have lots of great hockey players, and the biggest separator is what they call hockey IQ or intelligence, and that's the ability to really process information quickly, make decisions. I think anytime you're beginning a season or beginning a new sport uh, where maybe you haven't been as well conditioned uh, as you know later in the season or near the end of the year, that's when you're going to be most prone to overuse types of injuries. That's going to be you know sprains and strains and tendonitis and stress fractures. And so I think it's most important to, to kind of slowly uh, ramp up into an activity and build your volume in a stepwise way instead of jumping in all at once. Sophie Whelan was a musician. Back in Bloomington, and there is the St. Cloud Cathedral bench. And Robbie Stocker, the head coach there, breaks the huddle, and the teams will come back to it. 5.53 to go in the opening period, and we're talking in the break about the uh, St. Cloud Cathedral, the names, yeah, and this, there's fun to see so much history. Johnny Hirschfeld, it seems like every year I've been involved with high school hockey dating back to 2015, there's been a Hirschfeld at St. Cloud Cathedral or Petrosky at St. Cloud Cathedral. It's fun to see all the names just continue to, to give back here to the Cathedral community and their success. Hard fall there in the corner by Riley. Now comes in front, a point blank shot and a grunt stop there off Gillespie. And here comes Northfield back. It's Kaiser, he plays it behind the net. Now runaway trains meet behind the goal and it's gonna be picked up there by Hirschfeld. And St. Cloud Cathedral comes back out. Angled pass to center. That's broken up neatly by Ben Geiger at uh, center. The freshman, as we mentioned, for Northfield over the line. And trying to work through and does. And a shot goes over the top and out of play as Dwinnell came in. And you had said, if you need somebody to score a big goal for you, there's your man. He doesn't and he just about C did it there. He doesn't have a C on his jersey yet, but I've, I've coined him Captain Clutch. If you, in, in a big game, he's had a lot of OT goals, a lot of big late game goals. He's your guy, and you saw it there. He's got just wicked hands. Usually those tall guys like Durrell aren't going to have the good hands. He has them. Face off to the left of the Northfield goal. And cleared off the wall to the point, and finally out to center. Over skating there was Swenson, and it's back at neutral ice. 
Play to the middle, and now Cathedral breaks over the line. Wong dispossessed, and now here comes Cashin. Angling over the line to the far side for Northfield. Cash into the corner. Throws one in front. And it's scooped up on the bounce by Hanson. As we have a Northfield player getting a rough ride afterwards. And that would be Munson. Didn't appreciate it. Uh, Munson came back from junior hockey this fall to play with the Raiders. He's now playing on the second line with Stewart and Cash. And I think what Coach Luckcraft's trying to do is kind of balance out their scoring because he was on the first line for much of the first year. You can see his point totals reflect that. Shot from the faceoff by Rand is deflected wide and now Cathedral brings the puck to center ice and they will carry over the line and that is Swenson going into the corner pursued by Rand and now comes back out the other way his centering pass this time is blocked winds up in the corner finally again deflected around to the far side and Frank goes after it he and Johnson renew their personal battle as the puck goes into the corner and finally dug out there by Wong. Feeds the right point. Here's a shot. Blocker pad save there. Off of the defenseman Rosencrans. Now in the circle. St. Cloud Cathedral maintains possession. Hayward trying to come in front. Can't get there. As it comes to the left point. Finally played down and controlled by Rand. Who then fluffed his clearing attempt. And St. Cloud Cathedral brings it back in. And here's Wong. He goes behind the net. He goes down under a shoulder charge from Frank. And... That's going to be a, we're going to get a penalty here for elbowing with 3.56 to go in the first period. That was a, you know why that's a questionable call? It took the referee about three seconds to raise his arm. He's like, and I thought the same thing as an official. I'm like, is penalty? No penalty. And he thought about it long enough and went, yep, arm goes up. And uh, uh, the Cathedral will take the power play with their whopping 15% success ratio. We'll see if they can up their numbers right now. Well, with that talent, as you mentioned in the in the pregame, that's a little surprising. But now's the time you want your power play to start cooking anyway this time of year as it comes around behind the net as Frank gets the penalty for elbowing. And Cathedral, 9 for 60 on the power play. And it's picked up there by Jake Geiger, and he can't get out. Northfield kills in an 81% clip. They've only been shorthanded 53 times. And now it's loose in the near corner which isn't bad for 16 games now a centering pass to the right point now here is Dwinell shooting and that winds up deflecting over the top of the goal Northfield will pick it up and they clear it all the way down the freeze and that will be picked up finally in the right corner and Lane will ring the net here comes Cathedral down the way check that Rosenfeld over the line Hirschfeld he shoots and a save Puck winds up going off the glass before it reached the netting and now picked up and carried by Kaiser to center but it ran off his blade and now here comes Cathedral back Dwinell looking to center it now it's uh, Hirschfeld picking it up in the circle Hirschfeld stops at the dot takes the shot and a screen set up and somehow Frank saw it how did he make that save I don't know we were right behind Hirschfeld's shot angle I'm like how does the goalie see that puck that's incredible right there Outlaws can, can see pucks, they I can. guess, pretty well. They can well. see gangsters, too, and shut them down. <laughs> From the draw, here is Gebhardt. 40 seconds in the power play. Angled pass up the slot. Here's a shot, and there's another stop by Frank, and that one off Jager Wood. I can see how he saw that one. There was yeah. no interference whatsoever. Yeah, they gave him a good view there, but uh, Wood with eight goals on the season. The go with four assists. Face-off coming up to the left of the goal. 39 seconds in the power play, and that would be called collapsing the scrum if it was rugby. Yes. That was a uh, false puck drop there. Fake news, right? Fake news. Now from the draw, it's controlled by Northfield behind the net, and they will clear it all the way down the ice. And a choice here for the goaltender. Plays it off to the corner before Munson can get in there. Now... It's played back in with a player trapped by Riley. They tag, and there's no problem. As there's Cathedral picking it up. They have 18 seconds of power play left, and it's Petrosky. He plays it rink-wide, and now Cathedral to center ice. It's played on into the zone past Swenson, and it comes back into the corner. And collision's there. Now it's picked up by Munson, who tries to chip it off the wall. Now played beside the net. Two seconds in the power play, and Northfield is back at full strength, so each team has killed off a power play in the first period. There's a shot, and that hurt as it went off the defender Munson and cleared out to center 
Finally picked up and played. This thing's starting to pick up a little bit here as Wood plays it back in. And now Northfield in control with Riley. Plays it up the near wing to center, and Whiteman plays it into the zone. It'll wind up behind the goal, and getting there first for Northfield is Kennelly. Clear to the near side with 90 seconds to go in the first period. As the puck comes to neutral ice, and it's controlled by Hirschfeld. He's over the line. Got the pass. Boardman again going in. He takes the shot, and holding his ground. Frank makes the stop, and he appears to be sharp tonight. as He has made 11 saves in the first period in a scoreless game. Johnny Hirschfeld, we saw it on the power play there. That's a design play. You know how I know it's a design play? I've seen these guys play four times this year. <laughs> and it always starts with Hirschfeld behind the net. It's just a full-on rush. And when he gets, it's almost like he's skating downhill, but he's yeah. not. It's, it's, he's on level ice there, Bands. He just gets blows by the D very easily. Very fluid. If you're flat-footed against him, I think you're In trouble. pretty well dead as it goes behind the net now. And Boardman in the left corner. Banks it off the boards for Andrew Winter, and they can't get out. Comes to the slot, and Frank plays to center ice. That's intercepted, and playing it over the line. Here's Gillespie, right circle, shoots, and he's over the top. Didn't miss by a whole lot there. The carom comes out to center, and Hirschfeld has it for Cathedral as we hit the last minute of play in the first period as Robin Cook reminds us. Now a pass over to the near side, and here's Hirschfeld in the circle. He throws it up the slot, tipped away there by Winter, and here comes Northfield. A little lob to the near side, a saucer pass for Kaiser, who carries it over the line, takes it in deep, looks to center it, loose at the left edge, and now winds up behind the net as Cathedral will try again. There's an outlet pass blocked by Will Cash, and he centers it, a shot. Oh, a good save there, and a good opportunity. Winds up dying as Kaiser's shot was blocked by Hansen. Now behind the goal with 25 seconds to go, and Cathedral will step to center ice. And over the line they come. It's Duenell in the high slot. Comes to the far side. Pursued there by Ben Geiger. And they go to the boards. Finally controlled by Gillespie with nine seconds to go in the period. Gillespie to Sturm. Up the slot. Five seconds to go. Flips it towards the net. And it's deflected wide with two seconds to go. A centering pass. Comes to the circle. And a shot at the buzzer by Gillespie. And we have played one period. Uh, shots on goal 12-6, but I still think the great A's was only about 3-2 to two in favor yeah. of Cathedral. A lot of their shots came from the perimeter uh, and some good saves made by Fre Max Frank. I think Cathedral had the better of the play territorially, but, yeah, uh, correct. but uh, you got to put them in the net, right? No one's done that. So do we have interviews? We do. Okay. I so. think at some point we do. Oh, we're all set. We're, we're, we're all on, set the, uh, on the with, far side. Uh, we're going to start with Northfield with Mike Luckraft. On the bench with Coach Luckraft. Coach, things remain even after the first 20 minutes of play. What have you noticed about these two teams early on? Yeah, Cathedral's got guys with speed, so they're taking advantage a little bit of that as the period went on, got back on our heels a little bit. And then when we took the penalty at the end, momentum switched a little bit, so... Probably good to get out of that period with uh, with zero zero tie. So we'll we'll reevaluate and adjust and make some changes for the second. And your coaches, your team has defended well here this first period. What's it going to take to get one through in the second? Yeah, same thing. We've got to win battles down low. We've got to get a, a presence in front of the net. When we rotate pucks back to the point, shots have got to get through. So small battles need to be won. We'll we'll keep working on it and hopefully we can uh, get a couple in this second period. Coach, thank you so much for your time. And now we're going to send it away to break, and we'll be back after a few messages. I think a force for good is kind of just what it sounds like. We, we wake up every day, go to work, try to do the best we can, but also have in the back of our head that we're going to help people and, and try to make a difference in people's lives. While it's important to do things for others, it's how you go about doing that day in and day out. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about one team. I don't care who you are in this company. Everybody has an opportunity to make a difference and contribute to the whole piece of the pie of what we're trying to do. Stress fractures in the foot. Generally, the pain is on the top of the foot. There may or may not be much in the way of swelling, but there's usually tenderness, meaning that if you push on the area, it is sore to touch. So if you've had a change in activity, been doing a little bit more and developed pain that hurts when you walk or certainly hurts more when you try to run on it, that's concerning for a stress fracture. Sometimes those can be seen on x-ray, sometimes it requires an MRI to decide whether or not there is a stress fracture. How do we do it? When we step out on the ice? Is it just because we're told to? 
No. We keep working hard and working together. Giving 110 at practice and 120 on game day. Struggling to overcome and never giving up. We know the jersey matters. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lots of Matzo Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lots of Matzo Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. We're here with Dr. J.P. Delaney, former hockey player. Still a hockey player. Still a hockey player? Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. We'll get to that in just a second. And surgeon for Summit Orthopedics. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate you're it. You're a second timer. Yep. Second you're, year in a row. You're not as nervous as you were last year. No. I don't even think you were nervous Probably last not. year. No, you weren't. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little about your hockey career. You grew up in Rochester. Uh, funny, you're here watching a game and a former teammate, Jake Taylor, across the ice yeah, coaching. Yeah, a year older than me. Bring funny. back any memories? Yeah, absolutely. What was one Louis memory Smith. that stood out to you? Oh, in high school? Just high school or Jake or whatever. I mean, my favorite memory from high school was my senior year. Jake was off the team, but we yeah. went to the state tournament and I ended up scoring the game-winning goal in overtime. In the against Hibbing? Against Hibbing, breakaway. You can't take that away, right? No. I mean, you can never no. take that away I'll from I'll never you. forget it. No one will ever forget it. It's great. And then you went on and played some Colorado College, too? Yep. Yeah, I played Colorado College for three years when I was out there. And we had Kelsey Overman, Matt's. Yeah. Wife, her husband Matt played at CC too. So cool he came in right when I was leaving. So that is so cool. A lot of CC connections. Yeah. The only one we haven't made yet is Marty Surich. You know. Yeah. And well, I know Marty. I think you told me a story that you would cheat in line to avoid doing a drill against Marty because he could make you look you so bad. Fool every single time. <laughs> Well, we're not going to make you look like a fool today. That's for sure. All right, let's talk a little bit about your. You said today you were on call, which when I think of call on call, I think of like people that are sick. But people actually get injured and need immediate assistance. Is that what you Correct. would equivocate for your what yeah. you're on call? So we take like? call. We cover multiple different hospitals. And we also cover our kind of orthopedic urgent care. So if anything happens overnight while you know the rest of everyone is off of work, we kind of take care of it. So a lot of it is working through the emergency departments at the various hospitals. The doctors right. there will call us with any traumatic problems or infections or anything else that comes up and figure out how to deal with it appropriately. What would be a typical on call for someone of yours or the upper extremities? Yeah, so we deal with a lot of fractures, especially when it's icy out. Um, right. People fall, usually break their wrist, break their fingers or their elbow. Yeah. The doctors will call us, we'll look at the x-rays and figure out if they need to be admitted and have surgery done or if they can go home and follow up in clinic. Kelsey talked about that yesterday in her interview about the, the fact that there hasn't been a lot of ice, so there's right. been a slow time, which is actually a good yeah, thing. Yeah, relatively in, speaking. In yeah. some ways, it's right. a good, good thing. Good for people. Yes. Yeah, really good. She talked, in fact, about one of her first things she worked on was a snowmobile. A guy got his hand caught in a snowmobile. Yeah. And he loved, she loved how the fact that she put together, he started all the way back in the rehab process to getting the first now, which I'm sure is the yeah. biggest reward for you guys oh, as yeah. doctors. Absolutely. I mean, like, people come in with sometimes devastating injuries, right? And specifically dealing with hands and arms are very important to how we work our way through life and do our tasks, our job, our function. And so being able to restore someone to as normal a function as possible is extremely rewarding. Yeah, so th that's always a fun question to ask a doctor. How did you get into it? What was the aha moment? Like, hey, I'd like to do this for a living. Yeah, I don't know if I have the aha. You don't have one, no. Huh? Okay. I mean, like, my grandpa was a small town family practice doc down in Iowa. Okay. He did everything. You know, he did surgery. Yeah. He, you know, delivered babies. He took care of the common cough. Like, and he, he would even go out to all the farms and just go house to house making house calls. And so he's what inspired me to become a doctor. Oh, that's cool. But I found out sometime in, I don't know, high school that I wanted to do orthopedics. Don't really know why. I just knew that that's what I wanted well, to do. Well, you grew up in Rochester where there was, yeah, it was surrounded lots by a lot of medicine, medic for, sure. medicine for sure. That's yeah. pretty inspirational. I'm sure there was probably classmates and oh, yeah, friends absolutely. and parents, and things like that. One of my teammates, Mark Stewart, I mean, yeah. yeah, I played with him in high school. I played with him in college. Yeah. His dad was one of the, the head orthopedic he, surgeons yeah. of the USA hockey team. And Still I mean, is involved with it. I'm yeah. sure I saw that and obviously had an influence on me as it's well. It's good, some good uh, feet to follow and footsteps to follow. <laughs> some big sure. feet to follow. In. So what is the day to day? We talked, I said, emphasis on upper extremities. What's a, a typical day, a typical surgery that you do? Yeah, so I mean, we do a lot. I mean, we do carpal tunnel releases where we okay. take the pressure off the nerve and the hand. We do a lot of trauma where people come in with broken bones. And then I do shoulder as well. So I do a lot of rotator cuff repairs. I do shoulder replacements. 
anything between the shoulder and the hand, I can take care oh, of Oh, that's fantastic. All right, last hockey question, right? So you uh, got to come to the rink today. You don't, you have one a daughter that doesn't play, and you still play some? Where, how, do you, how much do you play? I play at least once a week. In the really? winter, it's once a week. Yeah, I play every Tuesday morning in Edina. There's a really good skate with a great group of guys. So we, okay. we play for, you know, six, I think, I, is Derek Keltier in that group? No, I don't think No, he's not. Okay. No. He, he has a similar skate at yeah. Braemar at that so time. We, so we play every every week. Every three months, we, you know, reshuffle teams and switch it up a little bit. Are you a white or a black? Right now, I'm on black. Okay. So. But it's yeah. always the white it's black deal. I, I had a, a deal too. Or the blacks always somehow won by the end, but it was white black yeah. all the time. It's fun. It's a good group of guys. No one's chippy. It's really high skill level. So it's, it's ah, a lot that's of fun. fantastic. That has, well, good to see you again. Thanks Great for being, being part here. of this. Appreciate it again. If you want to look up Dr. D uh, Delaney, uh, you can find him at summitortho.com. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together, and whether that's you know helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is, I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. People ask me how they know if they have arthritis. Arthritis is a diagnosis that we make in the office after we check x-rays and exam and take a history from a patient. The most common symptoms of arthritis are some diminished range of motion of a joint, joint stiffness, pain with use and motion, limited activity of what they can do compared to what they used to be able to do with that particular joint. Since 1933, three generations of Kozlaks have wined and dined Minnesotans with great food and impeccable service. Located in historic Northeast Minneapolis, Jack's is open for happy hour, dinner, and a tasty weekend brunch. With a world-class bar and a spectacular outdoor patio, your dining experience will be both memorable and delicious. Why do we do it? When we step out on the ice? Is it just because we're told to? No, we keep working hard and working together, giving 110 of practice and 120 on game day struggling to overcome and never giving up. We know the jersey matters. It's a Hello everybody. 17 minutes have come off the clock. 0-0 zero, zero, Northfield and, and Slain Cloud Cathedral well, uh, through the first period. To Tony Scott, what did you see think from the bird's nest up I think, uh, here? I think all the that, ways uh, that really collaboration to and work together and whether that's, progressed. you know, helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever. Maybe one time in the last five or six minutes. In a couple of my notes here, at 10.36 of the first period, Cam Kaiser, he skated all the way from the blue line. This is Northfield's Cam Kaiser. From the blue line to the top of the crease, he stopped in the St. Cloud Cathedral crease and just sort of waited for somebody to force him out of the crease. Can we expect the same level of intensity from Northfield in the second period? We had Coach Luckcraft on after the period with Kirsten Crow. He perceived, he, he was kind of mellow, but I think he went in the locker room and uh, put a spark underneath <laughs> this team. I'll just say that. Well, the power play certainly a spark for St. Cloud Cathedral. The shots on goal right now, 12 to 6. The bulk of those coming with the man advantage for the Crusaders. John Hirschfeld creating off that wing. What do they have to do to get more rebounds, though, Tony? It feels like a lot of shots are either being deflected into the netting or being held on to by Max Frank. I think they got to get the puck into the, into the cookie jar before they shoot the puck. They've been taking way too many perimeter shots, hoping for a luck rebound. They need to get the puck in there and fire it there to get it past Max Frank. If you could throw out one name from St. Cloud Cathedral who could break this game open, who would it be? That's my guy, Dwinnell. He is <laughs> my guy. I'm sticking with him. We are. We're starting the Mr. Hockey campaign tonight for Mr. Dwinnell from St. Cloud Cathedral. We've only got 45 seconds until period number two, but for now, we'll throw it to a word from our sponsors. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. 
I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together and whether that's you know, helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is, I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. Many people think that there's nothing that can be done for their back and their neck pain, but in fact, there's a, a wide range of non-surgical treatment options for many different problems, and our goal is to get people to the right treatment as quickly as possible, and that's why we offer same-day appointments, because if you're in pain and you're limited, waiting a week, waiting three months for an appointment is unacceptable. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. In the first period, Tony, you and I talking that uh, St. Cloud Cathedral in transition, they are lethal. Yeah, these kids, Gillespie, Glenell, and Hirschfeld have played together back in their youth off-season days. They know how to get up the ice. They were coached at a very young age how to do so. And, and, and the lucky recipient is Coach Stocker. He's yes. got these boys for two, three years to play together. It's fun to watch. They are good now. They can only get better. And yeah, no doubt about it. We were talking about Dwinnell, Andrew Dwinnell be between periods. Uh, I'm a voter for Mr. Hockey. I talked to him up in St. Cloud during media day and said, hey, young man, uh, not a lot of people know who you are. I will make a campaign personally to get you to that banquet on Sunday after the state tournament. Right neighborly of you as we get ready for period two. Penalty boxes are empty. And Nick Hansen on the goal to our left and Max Frank on the goal to our right. Great to see Nick Hansen back after an extended stretch out. What a nice young man. I got to meet him. Super well spoken. He's a River Lakes kid. Said he didn't really watch Cathedral growing up much, but he had a little bit of respect for him because they always won. That's how you earn it as the puck shot in from center ice. Winds up to the left of the cathedral goal and finally behind the net. Gebhardt gave it away and a centering pass does not connect. Comes out to center defender, falls in as a breakaway. A chance in, tied the goal! Gillespie on a breakaway and it is one to nothing. His 24th goal of the season and Cathedral breaks out on top. Classic case of a defenseman falls and just wide open door for Gillespie and he knows exactly what to do. He fakes to his forehand and finishes with the backhand. That's the first goal of the game. It'll be unassisted. And well, it should be unassisted. There may have been a pass to him in the zone. I didn't happen to recall, frankly. I was too busy watching the breakaway, so we'll wait for Robin Cook to give us the word. But it's one nothing for Cathedral after only 19 seconds of play in the second period. Now we'll get the announcement. Okay, so the, uh, there is an assist being given to Gebhardt. Gebhardt for poking it towards him. And now it comes out to center, winds up on the rafters. So we got a stoppage with 16, 18 to go. 42 seconds into the period. And so the goal officially, Gillespie with his 24th from Gebhardt. And it's one nothing. What a goal. I mean, you can see his numbers. He's the he's the guy who puts the puck in the net. He has more goals than assists. When he had the, when he got inside the blue line, I'm like, it's over. All right. Puck down in the right circle. And held in there at the left by Hayward. Here's a shot right on and a rebound steered right through the crease by Ty Frank. And it comes off to the corner. Now Northfield in possession with Munson in the left circle. Pass to center ice, intercepted by Rosencrans, and then played on into the zone by Swenson. And now circling Frank in his zone. Still looking for his first goal, but six assists already. He's been missing most of the season with injury as the puck comes out to center and back into the Northfield zone where Rand has it. And he banks it to center ice, intercepted by Rosencrans, and now played into the Northfield zone. And again, he's playing catch with Ty Frank as he goes back in the left corner, Frank does. And now plays ahead, here is Munson. Frank wide pass to the right and over the line. And it's Cashin, and he tried to then get past Rosencrans behind the net without success. 
to the wall now Stewart. And he is dropping it back to Munson, who's forced outside the blue line, and they have to regroup. Boardman playing it in, tipped ahead by Cashin. And Northfield getting a change now as Wong is ambushed there at center, and it's shot on in by Johnson. And now the Crusaders will finish a change, cleared around on the far side, and it's Whiteman in his zone, and he backhands it ahead, held in with a skate by Petrosky. Comes to the right circle as the goalie sees it, now goes behind the net and banks it off the wall to the left point for Sturm. And then Sturm is dispossessed. Puck comes out to center, and he won a physical battle there with Whiteman, which was a good play by the young defenseman, now played at neutral ice and relayed in, and here's a chance down the wing, a shot, and a save made off Petrosky. A good stop there by Frank, and now up in the high slot, pass picked off, Northfield coming back. They have a three-on-two with a little back pressure. Starting to catch up. Now a centering pass and in tight for a chance for Northfield was Kennelly, and he was stopped by Hansen. Now behind the net, it rings the boards to the near side. Geiger on the hash marks, plays it beside the goal, gets it back, and it got past him, and he has to come back for it into his zone. Big save oh, by yeah. Hansen there. Yep, as Northfield gets its first odd man rush of the game and gets a great shot on goal, and here they come again. Here's a shot and a chance there for Cam Kaiser. The 23-goal scorer, the leading goal scorer for Northfield. Comes out to center ice, and Ben Geiger backing up. Now plays it over to the near side for Riley, and then played on into the zone. That's going to be icing against Northfield, but they've come out in the second period, Tony, with a little more offensive intent than they showed. Yeah, well, it helps getting scored on on an unforced error, so that, I think that fired the boys up. This team is, you know, only one loss on the season. They're not used to being behind. So yep. I think that that really riled them up. They were probably kind of sleepwalking through the first period, and I think they're finally awake. Northfield, their only loss came in the end of November against Orono. So since then, 11 wins and two ties in their last 13 games. Now a centering pass and a shot from the right point. It'll bloop around in the slot as Rosencrantz took the initial shot, and now Hirschfeld fires over the top. And Northfield plays to center ice. Orono has Northfield's number. They do not want to play Orono in the state tournament if both teams make it. They beat them last year. They beat them last year in overtime in the state tournament. They beat them again this year. Three straight in crucial situations. So uh, I don't think the Raiders would like to see Orono on their bracket if they make it to state. That's how rivalries start, though, is now a pass leaks out to center ice, and Hayward will play it back in. And Northfield goes back behind the net. Played the first four minutes of the second period. 1-0 Cathedral. Gillespie's goal is Geiger hits the line. Jake Geiger stopping in the corner, waiting for help. Centers it, and a bouncing puck comes through to the near or far side, rather, and Rand plays it back behind the net. Jake Geiger back to Rand at the right point. He threw it in front looking for a deflection, and it's picked up now by... He was trying to pass that across, and it got deflected. You think? Yeah, he had head up, look right at the D. Now he got a three-on-one. And now the defense hustling back. A drop pass, and Hirschfeld goes down. There'll be a penalty to Northfield. And now played towards the right point, and really no option there, but he got the stick high on Hirschfeld. Now a shot and a blocker pad save there off Gillespie. The puck touched, and we'll get the penalty now. It'll be a high stick, and it comes at 4.51 of the second period. Someone once said, I don't know who it was, that Cathedral has a great transition game. I can't I'm remember who that sure would be. Who, I'm not sure who was. Somebody but didn't we know what they were talking right about, clearly. <laughs> like, Northfield was in complete control there. Yeah. They were, like, looking around. They are whipping around. All of a sudden, it's three on one, and they had to take Churchville down there. It was going to be a goal. All right, second power play for the Crusaders coming up. 0 for 1 to this point. And the penalty, Frank, high sticking at 451. He's taking both the penalties for... Northfield in this game and a team that hasn't been penalized very much now behind in that count here in this contest at the right point. This is Jager Wood feeding it. Now they come down in and the shot blocker pad save off Caden Johnson. Pass to the left point picked up there by Gebhardt. Now fed over to the right and they'll play catch at the points. Finally picked up there by Riley and he clears it all the way down the ice for Northfield. This is a crucial situation for Northfield. But they can't get down two goals with Nick Hansen in the net. We've already seen what he can do to change a game. Here's Petrosky over the line. And St. Cloud Cathedral with their first line just finishing up a shift. Now gave him some rest on the power play. And now a clearing attempt gets deflected into the 
Crusader bench. The Catholics get a blessing there. The puck goes out of play. Coach Stocker can get his his uh, top line out there, and you'll see Hirschfeld's going to take this one. He, the minute he gets the puck in their own zone, he's taking it all the way. He has. How do I phrase it? Blazing speed? Well, not to say blazing speed, but he knows what to do with it. He's yes. selective. He's um, he's got he's very smooth, and that's um, you don't I don't see that kind uh, of smoothness very often. As he's got the puck now at the top of the circle, and now he puts on a move, looks, centers it, and that was a nice pass to the circle. And Winnell shoots, and he winds up putting a one-timer just wide. Now loose to the circle. Northfield picks it up, and they carry it to center. And it's Cashin over the line. Now cleared around behind the net, and the Crusaders Wong leaves it. Griffin Sturms lists it 5'6", 150. He got every pound, last pound of 150 on that check there. Yes. And 150, that's in his pads? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's that would be very generous. <laughs> one fifty. Well, I that was a fine one to talk. That's what I weighed in high school, and I was six foot two. Here's a shot to goal from Hirschfeld, and the power play goal makes it two nothing for Cathedral. Blazing speed and a blazing shot for Johnny Hirschfeld, and a big two nothing lead for the Crusaders. Time of the goal is 6.36, and now work to do for Northfield to get back into this, but Hirschfeld, here you see it on the power play, and boy, just uh, top shelf. Just like you practice it for hours and hours and hours and hours. Well, brothers, I think Johnny might, I hate to say this on public television, but he might be the best one of all three. Uh, I just, he, he is fun to watch. I have not seen Cathedral yet this season, but boy, that's, uh, he's fun. And I'll play it into the right corner. We have a penalty coming, and it's going to put Northfield on the power play. We have an interference call coming. So Northfield with a chance to get one back anyhow. So Gephardt had the, uh, you know, they, they chipped it by the D and he took his, he left his lane and entered the forwards lane and that's interference 80, 90% of the time. Sometimes the refs let him get away with that, but this, these refs didn't. 6.55 is the time of the penalty. Gebhard, 47 penalty minutes this year. Wow. Which leads both teams from the draw. Munson feeds it down and now a Northfield's power play which has been so good all season, has a chance to get them back in the game. Frank Ooh. tried to pass to himself and it dribbles on out to center ice. I got a scouting report on Cathedral. Don't pass it to John Hirschfeld all alone <laughs> at the top of the blue line. It says it right here in the notes. And they almost did it right there. Yes, that would be great moments in common sense. As the puck comes over the line and here's Frank taking it to the corner, plays it around on the far side, looking there for Cam Kaiser. To the right point for Munson. Back down the wall for Kaiser. Got past him. And Hayward plays it up the wall, but that's held in. There's three maroon jerseys on the wall. A centering pass. Comes up the slot, and there's your man again. Hirschfeld playing it ahead. A breakaway for Dwinnell. Going in. He shoots. He scores! A short-handed goal. The tenth of the season for St. Cloud Cathedral. The sixth for Dwinnell. And it's 3-0. Ah, you can't leave that kid alone. You just can't. He's way too dynamic with his feet and hands, and he just finished it there shorthanded. We talked about how they remind us a little bit of World last year. Well, World made it to the state final. Could this Cathedral team make it to the state final this year? Well, their only loss in their last seven was to Hermantown. No disgrace in that. No. But uh, that's a shorthanded goal, and it's now 3 nothing. I have it, Duenell from Hirschfeld. There you go, and now over the line, Geiger closing, cuts to the slot, and in his pocket pick by Gillespie, goes down. A Cathedral fans want a penalty, and here comes Riley over the line, a drop, and it's picked up there. Kennelly feeds to the right side for Ben Geiger. 
Riley up the slot, 34 seconds in the power play. Back down the wall, and it's off the skate. Now winds up in the corner. Cathedral has no respect for Northfield's power play. They're just, they're not setting up in a box or nothing. They're just tacking. The minute they can, they attack. And Ward was a lot like that last year. No respect for their opponent's power play. Well, when you have that much individual skill with your penalty killers, I, I guess I can understand that to a point. Out to center, and here comes... Northfield over the line, a drop pass down low for Ben Geiger. He throws it in a slot, and a chance there winds up trickling wide of the goal for Kennelly as finally the Crusaders come back to full strength, and it's played back in by Riley on the near side for Kennelly. And then Kennelly losing out. Winter looking to center it, and that is intercepted by Petrosky, who first stepped on the puck and then played it off to the near side boards. Played on in by Wood. Past the halfway mark of the second period. Shots are 20 to nine, which means eight to three in the second period. Centering pass, stick behind by Frank, and now controlled by Ty Frank behind the net. Where'd you get those math skills? That's impressive. <laughs> what public school system would you, were you trained in? Uh, that would be Hopkins, where okay, right. ordinarily, you know, and I, I, I love my Royals, I gotta say it, but uh, they count generally by twos and threes in, uh, in Hopkins. <laughs> no question. <laughs> The basketball no school. Now we've got a timeout for. No, no, no. no we we're not going through. Timeout. We're going okay. through. All right, so we'll get a face off in the cathedral zone, but I think Coach Luckcraft would have loved the timeout. I probably would have. <laughs> yes, I would think so. Uh, we avoided the, the 12 minute timeout due to a penalty situation, and we're just zooming through that one, and we'll have one after the six minute timeout. All right, played behind the net, and it's picked up by the Crusaders, now leading by three. Gebhardt behind in the left corner, plays it out, and it's bouncing to center ice, swatting at it there was Riley. He couldn't hold it, and here is Hirschfeld swinging around, throws it in front, and it winds up to the point for Gebhardt, who takes it down the wall, and Hirschfeld takes his place at the right point, taps his stick once on the ice for the puck, and now they work it around. These three are so unselfish. They are. Literally, Hirschfeld had a short side shot there, and he held it long enough and fed it to the slot for a nice play. Held in right on the line. That's Dwinnell. He closes. He tried to play it past the defender, loose in the circle. And now it's stolen away. Hirschfeld shoots right on and a save. Well, we got to give a couple shout-outs here. Ty Frank yes. has a mowing business. Frank's mowing. He wanted a shout out today. We'll give it to him. Okay. And I've heard, I haven't confirmed that Andrew Dwinnell has a stick handling camp. He puts them on all year long because he just put one on right there on the blue line. <laughs> so Dwinnell stick handling camp. You can find that. And then you can find uh, Frank, Frank's mowing as well. Look those up both online. You, yes. might, find, you might find one for sure. <laughs> Play in the left corner now thrown in front of the net and it bounds towards the right point. Gebhardt plays it down and got under it and put it out of play with 6.17 to go. Only well, stop it as you get right before six minutes, right? In just the, in the timeout. They're teasing us, aren't they? They're just teasing <laughs> I us. I think they are, yes. And then we'll get a penalty in the, yes. between now and the six minute mark. So uh -huh. you know, erase all that stuff. From your lips to God's ears, we'll see. 6.17 to go in the second period. And Cathedral has taken charge of this game in the second period. Now a shot and a save made by. Frank off Gebhardt. Now it's up the slot. Gebhardt again at the right point. Flattens, fires. Oh, that's a good save through traffic by Frank. Comes off to the near boards and finally played out to center ice. And here comes Northfield. We did not get a penalty there against Stewart. Could have been a slash. Could have been, been. been a hook. But in any event, you're kind of doing the Crusaders a favor by putting them in the penalty box at this point as it's played on out to center Correct. ice. And Careful what you wish for, right? Yeah, that's right. Now Wong at center takes a pretty good shot there from Simon as it's played into the zone right onto the goaltender. And now we get a stoppage after the six-minute mark. So we'll take a break here from Bloomington Ice Gardens. 3-0 Crusaders on Friday Night Ice. I think a force for good is kind of just what it sounds like. We, we wake up every day, go to work, try to do the best we can, but also have in the back of our head that we're going to help people and, and try to make a difference in people's lives. While it's important to do things for others, it's how you go about doing that day in and day out. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about one team. I don't care who you are in this company. Everybody has an opportunity to make a difference and contribute to the whole piece of the pie of what we're trying to do. 
In life, we all need a little help to reach our summit. Whatever your summit looks like, it's easier to reach when your body is strong and healthy. At Summit Orthopedics, our team of highly specialized physicians listens to and values every one of our patients. We take a conservative approach to care to get you back to your healthy and active lifestyle. Reach your summit. Summit Orthopedics. Visit summitortho.com to make an appointment today. Well, the history books will tell you that Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin were the big three, but tonight it's Ben Hirschfeld, Gillespie, and Dwinell. They've all scored the goals for St. Cloud Cathedral, and they lead it 3-0 with 5.31 to go in the second period with Tony Scott, Jeff Papas from Bloomington Ice Gardens. You almost didn't even have to watch the game. Just listen to the listen to the preview <laughs> pregame show. We told you it was going to happen. <laughs> Yes. And we even called the shorthanded goal. I mean, yeah. like, literally, it's like a, we had the crystal ball. You have that savant-like knowledge. Yeah, that, that exactly. Is really, uh, it's just uh, it's a it's a privilege to be in, in your presence on these nights. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Comes off to center and bounds all the way down the ice. No icing and going after it for Northfield is Cashin behind the net. And that's stolen away. And it'll poke towards the blue line. Held by Ben Geiger. Shoots, and it was deflected by Jake Geiger wide. Winds up in the corner, and here they come again. Hirschfeld down the wing, cuts to the middle, and then he is dispossessed by Jake Geiger, and a collision there will send bodies flying in the zone. And, oh, there's a pretty stiff shot thrown by Gillespie. That's the second time he's gotten Kaiser. And now it's brought in by Dwinell, and he leaves it at the right point. Played down by Gillespie. Here is Hirschfeld looking to center, and that will dribble out to center ice. And now Gebhardt controls at the red line. He shoots it right back in. And Frank couldn't cut it off. They're changing, are the Crusaders. And now played back behind the net by Northfield. They've had three shots on goal in the second period. And Crusaders have had 11 and three goals as we have 4.25 to go in the period. Here is Riley behind the goal. Now cleared around to the near side. And finally played out to center right on the tape for Cashin, who's over the line. Working against Gebhardt behind the net. Gives him a sweep check. Puck comes off him. Now to the right point. Rand shoots, and that winds up going wide. Controlled now by the Crusaders in the near corner, but only momentarily. Now they'll scrap for it there. And they try to come in front as the puck runs to the high slot. Rand backhands it down to the corner. And Rosencrans clears around on the near side. Rand at the left point holds it in. Makes the referee lean back, and now Rosencrans behind the goal. His outlet pass stolen in the Ooh. corner, and then he throws a hit, and they are playing physically. You mentioned that uh, you know we'd see players aggressive and attacking on both of these teams, and that's what we've seen, but primarily from the gold shirts. Yeah, if, if whoever won the physical battle, it's definitely been Cathedral. They're winning the goal scoring battle. You talked about three shots on goal, but one of those three shots was the best save of the night by Nick Hansen. I think we'll replay that one over and over in our head. The two Especially on one. the Northfield kids yeah. will be replaying that one in their head. Yeah, they get a goal there. It's much different story. Yep. Now here's a shot by Boardman that winds up deflecting. And here comes Cathedral out to center ice. Wong over the line. He takes a shot, stick save by Frank off to the far boards and Cathedral sets up shop. 3.25 to go in the period. Now a centering pass intercepted and Northfield, they can't get out of the zone as over skating the puck there was Benjamin. Now behind the net, Boardman in the corner. There's to play it ahead. It comes to the blue line and not out. Finally it does come out and Northfield regroups. Kennelly feeding the right side. That's intercepted by Hayward and a pass up the middle. And here is Wong shooting, and a save made by Frank, a sneaky little backhander. Who says the backhanded shot is a lost art? That was a good chance, and a good stop by Max Frank. I think I scored most of my goals on the backhand. Really? Yeah. It just was a different age back then. Like, literally, I scoop a lot. Of, you, scoop a lot you can scoop better on the backhand. You know, I, I, did, I did that, too. What I found is that when... You get the right angle off the gym floor, then <laughs> it's much oh, easier. <laughs> I, I sense you didn't skate. You were you're a floor <laughs> hockey legend. I was her. I was her commissioner. <laughs> oh my gosh! Floor, Hopkins floor High School. Hockey was huh? the best sport oh, ever. Couldn't beat it. Man, I was already in broadcasting, so oh, I got a hit thrown behind the play. Fifth, and city, city of Minneapolis, fifth grade city champions would get to go to Battle Creek, Michigan, play in the national 
floor Ooh. hockey championship. That would have been huge fun. I didn't make it. We were close a couple times, but I, in ninth grade, I coached a team that made it to Battle Creek. So it was, floor hockey was a big part of my life from <laughs> fifth grade, fourth, fifth to and ninth grade. So they, we always had ninth and 10th grade coaches. Oh, that's great. So it was great. That's great. What an afternoon of fun that was. Cause we would do it before we go to practice. We go coach our floor hockey teams and made it to nationals. It was a blast. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, it's controlled by Northfield and they carry to center ice. Ben Geiger over the line. Northfield will love one before the break, and there's a shot that's sticked wide off. Kaiser's stick, and up the slot it comes, and here's Dwinell at center ice. Plays it into the zone, and Riley watching him like a hawk. Now it comes over to the far side, and it's a two against two. Here's a shot that whistles wide of the goal, and boy, Cam Kaiser went down. I'm amazed there was an interference call there as the puck is picked up. He got up. hooked. He did. He and got hooked to the ice, and then went, and Lily decleated the goalie. Goalie didn't like it, but it really wasn't Kaiser's fault. No. And there's a shot from the wing boards that is a pad save off Gillespie. 140 to go in the period, and Cathedral in charge, 3-0, as the puck comes finally back into the zone so they can get a line change, and Frank behind the goal. Will come out the left side for Northfield. Long pass, and it's loose at neutral ice. Cashin can't reach it. Now played back down the wing. Cashin chases, but Gebhardt is there first. Now played to neutral ice, where it's controlled by Rand, dropping it back into his zone. Frank into the center circle. Munson can't get there. Petrosky had a swipe at it. Now played into the zone as Munson chases after it. Goes behind the net. Munson swings around. And then is forced back by Gebhardt. Comes back behind the net as we hit the last minute. Oh, it's a good centering pass there on the tape for Stewart, and he couldn't shoot as the puck now held in by Northfield, and they play it down low. This is Cashin centering it loose at the left side, and we get a whistle and a stoppage. Did the net come off? May have. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say about the two-minute mark, Northfield needs a break. They do. They haven't had a break yet, and uh, maybe a good bounce. Something to go their way, because I think they definitely have the potential to get back in this game, but they're going to need a break here, either to get to one or to get to two to make this thing interesting. Well, I hate to use the old hackneyed phrase, but puck luck. Yeah. You know? And sometimes you you earn your breaks, right? Yes. Well, it's not like they're not working. It's just that they're playing against a very skilled first yes. line for St. Yes. Cloud Cathedral. And now the puck comes up the slot with 45 seconds to go and a pass to center. Here's Riley. And in the center circle, it's controlled. Kaiser over the line. Munson in the circle, drops it up the slot, and a shot blocked off the stick of Jake Geiger. Now Cathedral back with a lead pass for Hirschfeld, who cannot latch onto it. It comes out to center, bouncing. Gillespie plays it ahead, and it comes all the way back in the zone to the right. And Riley there with 23 seconds to go in the period. Goes back behind the net to the near side for Frank. Pass up the middle, and Munson now... Rink wide, that's stolen away. Now it's batted out of the air and into the rafters. Somehow didn't touch anything from Bridger Riley. I bet he couldn't do that again if he tried. Six seconds to go in the period. Now a slot pass up the middle. Here's a chance, and it's 4 nothing for Gillespie with his second goal of the game, 25th of the year, and it's a four-goal advantage. Mm, I, think the, I think that Coach Luckcraft is going to ask, you got to blow that thing dead. If it goes up in the rafters like that, he's got a legitimate beef. He's got a legitimate beef on that. If it goes to the rafters, like you got to just blow it dead. Not hit the rafter, but it, if it gets up above the plane there, I think you got to blow that thing dead. Yeah, that's uh, undoubtedly the discussion that's going on. What did I say about a break? They just yeah, didn't well, get a break yeah, I was just there. gonna, I, I was just gonna say that. Break. That's uh, about the worst kind of puck luck that you can have, and the officials talking it over with the bench, and I don't think they'll get any joy there. But it comes no. with two seconds to go. In the period, 16:57. These, these the are time. 5:07 referees. They've seen Northfield pummel the Big Nine all year long, so they know who these guys are. And that's the end of the period. Very frustrating finish for the Raiders. And the goal reads Gillespie's 25th second goal of the game. Dwinell and Rosencrans get assist. 16:57 is the official time, and now we're going to go down to the bench. When we now we're still having that discussion with yeah, the uh, he's still talking about him. I, I don't blame him. I don't no, think I don't blame was, him a bit. 
That thing cleared the plane by six feet. You even said you couldn't do that two or three times. I don't think you could. I mean, look at the girders up here. Now we're ready to go back down behind the bench. Here we go. Team, over 20 shots on net and four unanswered goals. How was your team able to take control in this one? Yeah, I mean, our, our message at the end of the first period was keep doing what we're doing. I think they had the first four shots on goal in the first period, and then we outshot them 12 to 2 from there. So we said just continue to commit to a simple game, get pucks deep and go to work, and it felt like we started to get some chances after committing more to that. And how does your team maintain that edge in this final period coming up? I mean, it's hard, right? But, you know, I tell the guys, if you want to be a championship team, you got to close in third periods, whether it's 4 nothing, 2-2, two to two, or whatever. We have to attack it with the same mentality. So the hope there is that we can commit to that. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We're going to step aside, but stay with us. We'll be right back after this. But from the get-go, it was, hey, we're going to be a, a source of good in the community. And we got the Keystone program that we give away 10% of our profits. It's, it's such a core value is the philanthropic part, piece of this and whether it's Hope Kids or ETS or, or Whispers of Hope, the Grief Club, um, basically it set out that this is something that it's a part of what you do and, and everyone has a lot of buy-in and is very excited to do it. With an injection, we're usually trying to minimize inflammation or block a nerve to prevent it from sending a signal somewhere that causes you pain. So we're not actually masking any of the symptoms or the problem, but we are trying to improve the inflammation or block the pain signal so that people can feel relief. Since 1933, three generations of Kozlaks have wined and dined Minnesotans with great food and impeccable service. Located in historic Northeast Minneapolis, Jack's is open for happy hour, dinner, and a tasty weekend brunch. With a world-class bar and a spectacular outdoor patio, your dining experience will be both memorable and delicious. Brew Pub Lots of Matzah Pizzas are made in the heart of America's Dairyland, Kakana, Wisconsin. Every Brew Pub pizza is made with the highest quality meat and veggie toppings. Them bombarded with over half a pound of award-winning Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. Snag a slice of brew pub pizza at the concession stand or enjoy a whole pizza conveniently located in the frozen pizza section of your local grocery store. Brew pub lots and lots of pizzas, the ingredients for a great time. We're with Dr. Ike Hasley from Summit Orthopedic. How are you doing today, doctor? Good, thanks for having me. Oh, good, thanks for being here uh, at the freezing cold Dakota Ice Arena. You dressed for a nice arena, Yeah, multiple you layers. You didn't realize how warm it was going to be Yeah, here. that's all right. We're, we're adaptable. Yes, you are. Um, let's talk a little bit about your uh, journey here in the medical field. You came in, you, you grew up in Iowa, went to the yep. University of Iowa for, for med school. Yep. What was the inspiration to go to med school? Yeah, I played a lot of uh, different sports growing up as a, as a high school athlete, uh, you know, football, basketball, track, baseball, kind of the whole list. Everything. And so had a lot of injuries myself. Like uh, liked uh, kind of looking out for my teammates when they inev inevitably got injured. Um, and so uh, that was kind of the spark, I think. And Were you the then, team uh, doctor before the, they had team uh, doctor? That, that might be a little bit of an overstatement. <laughs> but, uh, Not true yeah, doctor, but yeah, like yeah. just a little bit you always were on the lookout for yeah, stuff like I that. Yeah, I like being that person that, you know, someone could uh, rely on or come to if they needed help or, or had a question or whatever that was. So uh, I think that was the kind of initial spark. And then uh, when I was at the University of Iowa, saw some folks, uh, some experts in sports medicine, ultrasound guided procedures, doing their thing, um, talking through, you know, return to play things with athletes, yeah. uh, that sort of stuff, and said, this is something that I could see myself doing for the rest of my life. And, and uh, yeah, that brought me, brought me here. You talked about playing multiple sports. I mean, you've played a lot of sports. Um, how do you think that pays off? Uh, for athletes today from you know a lot of these kids that are doing one sp single sport athletes you did the multiple sport talk a little bit about the differences between the multiple sport and how that would help an athlete yeah well as a provider I think it helps me you know meet someone where they're at whether it's their off season whether they've got an important tournament or game coming up um, and that brings up a good point of kind of the multi-sport athlete you know 
youth specialization in sports. Uh, we see a lot of overuse injuries, and so tendinopathies, overuse injuries, that's kind of uh, my subspecialty. Um, so that's something that we talk about all the time with, with um, kids, athletes, parents, things like that. How would you like, do you have like a recommended time, how much a kid sh should train on a specific sport? Yeah, there's um, some good research being done on this kind of across the, the nation and the globe. And one kind of rule of thumb that I like to tell athletes and, and, um, and uh, youth athletes especially and their parents is, you know, in general, if you are uh, 14 years old, then you should not be practicing more than about 14 hours per week. So um, one, one hour per year? year yes exactly okay. so that's an example you know if you're 12 then no more than 12 hours of of structured practice or or game time things like that when you add it all up per week now uh, i like the the rest word is a is a is a really tricky subject right rest is really important yeah for athletes it can too. be hard yeah. but hard to say no to all the different things what are some of the uh keys to rest that someone could learn from you with yeah uh we want to take a couple months off from your main sport each year, and some athletes do that by playing a different sport. So if you're a pitcher, uh, you know, just like those professional baseball players, uh, just like we keep track of their pitch count so that they don't get hurt and overdo it when right. the playoffs are coming up. Uh, we like to think of it that way as well, even for our for our uh, youth pitchers. And so that's a metaphor that we use pretty frequently when we're talking about that sort he's of thing. He's talking to you hockey dads out there too, two months off. Did you, he just, he's a doctor, not me. <laughs> yeah, don't get me in trouble now. <laughs> I'm just so, kidding. But. All right, uh, last but not least, so w let's talk about the types of work that you do. You're not a surgeon, you do non- yeah, non-operative sports medicine. So um, I did. Uh, I got to train with some of the the world leaders in ultrasound diagnostics and ultrasound guided procedures. So we do injections very frequently. Um, if there's a, a question about, you know, does this person have uh, uh, patellar tendonitis or do they have tennis elbow or golf elbow, um, then we can use the the ultrasound machine to take a look at their soft tissues and see if that's indeed the case or if it might be something else. And um, we also do some higher level procedures that are pretty unique to Summit Orthopedics, um, whether it's a, a tenotomy procedure where it's like a, a mini surgery. Right. Um, something it's like that. It's not invasive though, right? Yeah, yeah. The downtime is, uh, it really depends on what we're doing, but uh, there's not a big open incision. It's just a tiny little incision with a, with a pretty small needle that we can uh, really help someone get back on track for something that they may have been dealing with for, for years even. That's got to be the biggest reward for you as a doctor is having... You know, you meet with a client who's got an acute injury and then getting them back to whether it be a youth sport or pickleball yeah. or golf or yeah, even exactly. just someone walking in general. Yeah, whether someone rolled their ankle last week or they've been dealing with heel pain for multiple years, uh, kind of getting back, getting them back to their function is a word that we like to use a lot. Right. And so putting their needs first, uh, getting them to do the activities that really give them fulfillment in life is uh, how, how we like to you know, explain things to, to people, and that's what's really rewarding to us as well. Well, thank you for being here, Ike. We're going to get back to the regular scheduled programming on hockey, but glad to have you here in the hockey business. Yeah, thank you for having me. Ike Hasley from Summer Orthopedic. For me, it's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together and whether that's, you know, helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is, I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. Many people think that there's nothing that can be done for their back and their neck pain, but in fact, there's a, a wide range of non-surgical treatment options for many different problems, and our goal is to get people to the right treatment as quickly as possible, and that's why we offer same-day appointments, because if you're in pain and you're limited, waiting a week, waiting three months for an appointment is unacceptable. 
Welcome back up top to the bleachers here at Bloomington Ice Garden. Our second period officially in the books, and boy, howdy, that was different than the first period. Four to nothing, St. Cloud Cathedral. After the second period, Tony, what did you see from your bird's nest? I saw shorthanded goals. Yes, you did. I saw breakaway goals. I saw dangling. I saw Cathedral doing what Cathedral loves to do, get out and transition and close when it matters. Yeah, tell me what kind of a backbreaker is that for Joey Gillespie to score with two seconds remaining well, in the second period. And did you see what the puck went up into the rafters, came back down, and Coach Luckcraft and the captains from Northfield were disappointed in the call, and they went in and scored right after it went through the rafters like that. Not the best call in the world, but uh, it did not hit metal in the in the stands, <laughs> so technically the refs were right, but in, in fairness, when it goes up in there, it's got to be blown dead. Sure, but 3 nothing, 4 nothing. in any case, a big hole for Northfield to climb out of. What do the Raiders have to do in the third period to make this a ball game. I think it's a victory for the Raiders if they can get two goals past Nick Hansen tonight. If they get one, I'd be surprised. All righty, here's my last question for you. Could we possibly see running time, the dreaded running time nah, in the third period? I don't think so. I think it's going to be 5-1. You think it'll think be 5-1? I think will get a goal on the, on the board for this one and we'll play out the string. As the promoter, as the Don King of this event, I would oh, love no. a three or four goal <laughs> spurt by the Raiders here, just like the just like the Crusaders had in the in the, in the second. We could see a, a flip of the script here in the third. Alrighty, now before you compare yourself to the boxing as as promoter Don King, Don King again, <laughs> we'll be back with the third period after a word from our sponsors. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together, and whether that's you know helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is, I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. People ask me how they know if they have arthritis. Arthritis is a diagnosis that we make in the office after we check x-rays and exam and take a history from a patient. The most common symptoms of arthritis are some diminished range of motion of a joint joint stiffness, pain with use and motion, limited activity of what they can do compared to what they used to be able to do with that particular joint. Back at Bloomington Ice Garden. Since 1933, three generations of Kozlax have wined and dined in the zone with four the big food. So the Raiders and... with a lot of work to do in the third period if they want to avoid their first loss in almost two months. Their only loss to this point was in their third game of the season against Orono back on November the 28th. And they'd won seven in a row coming into tonight, but they've run headlong into one of the best lines in Class A, Hirschfeld, Gillespie, and Dwinnell, scoring all four of Cathedral's goals in the second period after a scoreless first, and they outshot Northfield 16-6 to in that middle yeah, session. It's a so network of great the clients, shots great on shareholders, goal are 28 great to 12. business partners and great nonprofits as or well. Uh, Cathedral, as we get ready to start the third period. Fresh 17 on the board, and we await the return of Tony to the broadcast area as we look at the benches, and you see the Crusaders, certainly the happier of the two teams now. In a discussion after the second period as the teams are leaving the ice from... Uh, Mike Luckraft with the officials regarding the circumstances surrounding that fourth goal for St. Cloud Cathedral. The puck wound up going into the rafters but not touching anything and came down. And eventually Gillespie scored with less than three seconds to go in the period. That's the kind of thing, as Tony, as you mentioned, when you're looking for a break, that's sort of like the opposite of what you had intended. And uh, that doesn't help you. Yeah, they didn't get a break on that one. I wonder what the referee's looking for here. No, I'm ready to go. No, whatever it is, it's now been dealt with. 17 minutes on the board, and we are underway in the third period. And it's picked up now by Hirschfeld, and he will carry. Ends up going over the line. Dwinell throws it towards the net right on, and Frank 
Puts a glove on it and gets a stoppage. Well, you can see what Coach Luckcraft told his team that we need to be, we need to make some things happen. Physicality. You see Jay Geiger coming out throwing two hits, one on Hirschfeld and one on Gephardt in the first 15 seconds. Now, here's Dwinell throwing it up the slot. Sturm shoots and that winds up deflecting wide to the far side. And now Winter plays it out to center. Here's Gebhardt. The end of the uh, second period there, they put Munson back on the line with Kaiser yep. and Geiger. I think that was just to kind of, as an end of period measure, because it looks like Winter's back on the left wing for the Raiders. Trying to score a goal before the break, and it wound up, again, on opposite day, having the intent that uh, they wanted. And over the line comes Northfield, Jake Geiger, and it dribbles off his stick blade. Winds up to the wall on the near side, runs to the slot, and it's poked down the wing, and here's Hirschfeld. Closing in, takes a shot, and it comes off Frank. Finally swatted ahead and out to the blue line, and it's going to stay in the zone. Picked up now, Dwinell will play it rink wide to the far side, and Ben Geiger will intercept there. And controlled and carried to center ice by Winter over the line. He takes a shot, stick save goes into the netting off Hansen. Face off with a minute 19 gone in the third period. I think Hansen uh, has come back, looks 100% from injury. He's shown no signs from the last time I saw him play in the net. That was the East Grand Forks game where they dismantled the preseason number one green wave up in St. Cloud. Play behind the Crusaders goal and it's Hayward there. St. Cloud Cathedral has used four varsity goaltenders this season including Hanson, and now here's a pass off to the left. It'll be picked up there by the Crusaders and Wong playing it rink wide to the near side. Johnson shoots it in, and behind the net, Cooper Rand plays up the far wall, and now a pass to Stewart, middle breakout, and he is not able to get a good pass away. Now controlled by Munson, and over the line he comes. Munson tried to cut to the net, and it came right onto the goaltender, and Hanson made the save. Blake Hazer, Matthew Jano, and Keaton Legrand also playing for St. Cloud Cathedral in goal. We've become the Cathedral Network. This is our third game with the Crusaders this year. We saw the East Grand game. We saw the Hermantown game where they're only loss of the year and now against the Raiders. Three top 10 teams, they play a tough schedule. Now back behind the net, off to the far side. And look how they swing into attack so quickly. Here's a shot that is blocked off the Defense from Benjamin and cleared out to center ice. Now play to the line and Boardman got past him and comes around to the near side. And Riley taken to the boards by Wood. Puck winds up behind the net. Wood chasing after it there along with Boardman off to the far side. And the Crusaders get possession. Centering pass comes right through the crease and out towards the left point. Petrosky can't hold. Now here's a play out to center ice and here's Kennelly shooting it in for Northfield. They get a change. As we come up on the 14-minute mark in the third period, and a 4-0 lead for the Crusaders, cleared all the way back into the north field end, and Frank will chase it down behind the goal. Frank comes to the left, and he played it right past Hirschfeld, and over the line, comes to the near side. Frank leaves a drop pass. Here's a shot that's deflected over the glass and out of play off the stick of Cam Kaiser. One thing's for sure, the uh, Raiders will learn a lot from tonight's game. They'll learn yeah. a lot like about themselves, and that's what these games are good for, you know, a learning lesson, and I think the Crusaders are going to get a lot out of it as well. Well, a loss at this stage doesn't kill you, but it does give you a, uh, a wake-up call if one is needed, but you're going to talk about a team that hasn't lost in two months. They've been awake for most of the season as the puck is cleared all the way down the ice. After tonight, St. Cloud Cathedral with five games left. They play Northern Lakes, Detroit Lakes, and Tatino Grace all at home to finish up against Little Falls. Tatino just knocked out Rogers last yes, night. Yes, I saw come that. The Eagles. Yeah. And after tonight, Northfield has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. They have eight games to go still. So they've got time. Oh, yeah. But uh, every now and again, a reminder is not the worst thing in the world for a team as the puck comes no. out to center. And it's played across by Ben Geiger now into the zone. <clears throat> Excuse me, picked up in the high slot, and now here comes Hirschfeld. Down the wing. Hirschfeld draws two defenders to him and then drops it up the slot. Kaiser, and it's picked up now by Frank, who goes behind the goal. 13.25 to go. He watched Hirschfeld come in and went the other way. Now 
played into the zone rink wide by Gebhardt. Winds up behind the net and Riley goes behind the goal. It's centered and it winds up behind the net where it's finally intercepted by the Raiders and they play around to the near side. And it's Ben Geiger playing it ahead and we're going to have a penalty coming up against the Crusaders. Bounding puck to the right point. Rand picks it up. He closes, takes a shot, and there's going to be a slashing penalty coming up here as the attacking player, the stick slashed out of his hands, and that's a minor penalty. You could have heard that slash in Cottage Grove, <laughs> and we're in Bloomington right now. The whole rink heard that one. And it's Gebhardt getting the penalty, and it comes at the 4-10 mark of the third period. Third power play for Northfield. This is where Kaiser has been shining all season. Nine power play goals for the Northfield. It'd be hard for him to shine by sitting on the bench. That's true. As up the slot it comes, and Riley, she oh, was a one timer that tried to set up to the near side, and Kennelly fluffed his lines as the puck comes all the way back into the Raiders zone. That's the first 30 seconds gone on this power play. And Northfield. 0 for 2 so far. Here is Ben Geiger over the line into the circle. Brings it around behind the net. And now slings it across. And it's, oh, here's your puck lock again. As the head winner open in front, and he wound up deflecting the pass out of play. <laughs> yeah, it's just they haven't had it tonight. It just hasn't been there. They got their top group out there, and, and so does Cathedral. And they got the snipers out there, Donnell and. Hirschfeld. Hirschfeld has two shorthanded goals this season. Gillespie has one, so of the three, they have eight shorthanded goals. Just out of their top three forwards, and Landon Swenson also has one to make nine coming in, and now Dwinell's got six because he scored one in the second period. Cleared back into the Northfield zone, and here is Frank to Kaiser. Over the line, shoots, he scores! Well, it's easier to score a power play goal when you're on the ice. He did it right there, and you know what? I think Cathedral saw it. If they didn't see it, I saw it. They ran a nice, Geiger runs a nice pick play right up the blue line and opened the door like the Red Sea. Moses right there, and Kaiser finishes it, gets one by Hansen, and all of a sudden things are just a little bit more interesting. Well in and it comes at the 516 mark it is a power play goal for Northfield and now one for three and it's Kaiser from Geiger at 516 power play goal and now here is Jake Geiger behind the goal, looking to center it, and it's held in right on the line. Played down in front of the net, and finally picked up by the Crusaders. The rink wide pass, two on one. Hirschfeld closing, shooting, and he missed the net. As Duenel, that's not a bad decoy there, as he no. winds up playing it to the corner. Now tries to come out, and he gives the puck to Hirschfeld again in the corner. Banks back towards Sturm, one touch pass across to, <coughs> excuse me, to Gebhardt. And now behind the net, Dwinell is after it. Coming in to help out is Gillespie. Did we get which Geiger got the assist? Um, it was Jake that got yeah. the assist. And Sturm shoots a screen there, and it wound up deflecting. Now here's Dwinell in the high slot, closing in. That's a backhanded centering pass and a save made by Frank. And you know this cathedral line as we got a stoppage here. We're going to take a timeout and we'll finish that thought in a bit. It's 4-1 on Friday Night Ice. I think a force for good is kind of just what it sounds like. We, we wake up every day, go to work, try to do the best we can, but also have in the back of our head that we're going to help people and, and try to make a difference in people's lives. While it's important to do things for others, it's how you go about doing that day in and day out. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about one team. I don't care who you are in this company. Everybody has an opportunity to make a difference and contribute to the whole piece of the pie of what we're trying to do. In life, we all need a little help to reach our summit. 
Whatever your summit looks like, it's easier to reach when your body is strong and healthy. At Summit Orthopedics, our team of highly specialized physicians listens to and values every one of our patients. We take a conservative approach to care to get you back to your healthy and active lifestyle. Reach your summit. Summit Orthopedics. Visit summitortho.com to make an appointment today. Back in Bloomington, and there you look at the cathedral bench. Who do the TV timeouts favor? Mr. Papas. You know what? I think at it, this point. I would think St. Cloud. I would I guess think Cathedral. So too. I mean, Cathedral doesn't want them. They're gonna get they want the momentum and they want to keep going. They don't want to slow right. the thing down. But whatever whatever serves to get that uh, top line some rest and the best way to keep the puck out of your nets to keep it in the opposing zone, and they do that very, very well. Here's Frank behind the goal. Ten and a half minutes now to play. 4-1 for the Crusaders. Pass tipped by Cashin and then backhanded right back in by That's a tough pass to catch O'Neal. there. Yeah. It's the low percentage stuff, but then you got to try to open the ice up and maybe hit some flyers, do something. Over the line they come. And carrying it deep there is Munson. He goes behind. The goal comes out the far side. Drops to the left point and now over to Frank in the top of the left circle as the goalie sees it. And now it's a shot. Oh, and through a screen rebound chance in front for Cashin, and he just put it wide. Now Cathedral back at center. Wood at the blue line, plays it on into the zone. Frank contending for it there. It runs over the top of Wood and back down the dasher board, picked up in the right corner by Riley, and then he is... Knocked into the boards by O'Neill. And an outlet pass blocked by Petrosky. And we're going to get a whistle. And that, a last, that shift there, you could see that that's what Coach Luckcraft wants out of these Raiders. They want that puck zipping around, making good passes, making the unselfish next pass. Saw a little bit of that in the offensive zone there. Let's see if they can continue here. It's going to be tough when Hirschfeld and Dwinell get their hands on puck because they're not going to give it up too easily. Now it's like it's nailed to their sticks, and it's now played across to the near side, and Riley plays it out to center ice. Now Dwinell bank it ahead and into the zone, and here comes Hirschfeld. What a great move, and a shot winds up going wide by Gillespie, but just a creative play by Hirschfeld to find space there. Now it's picked up on the near side, and Cathedral will throw it across, a collision at high in the slot as Sturm picks it up, takes a shot, and a glove catch by Frank. Not a crazy line combo for Coach Luckcraft right now. He's got Winter. Oh, he does top line out there. I didn't see Geiger out there. I was like, well, they are playing. One. We've had ones versus ones almost the entire night. He's going to his third line right now. Coach Luckcraft is. What he's going to do is he's going to go to this line. He's going to come right back. Watch. He's going to come right back with that line the next chance he can. And I bet you Munson's going to be playing with him. Shot goes wide from Gebhardt, comes around to the near side, and it's flicked to Sturm at the left pointer, holds it in, takes a shot, and that goes wide. Long carom winds up along the half wall, and finally to the right point, and a shot by Gebhardt's deflected out of play. So Did that one hit the, hit the rafters or not? I wasn't quite sure. I think it went to the netting, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, it hit the rafters, I like know. clanked just, off yeah, of them. Just <laughs> Man, that's a tough call. Yeah, well... At least it wasn't scoreless at the time. No. I mean, that would have that uh, been unhinged. Face off to the left of the Northfield goal. 8.45 left in the third as we come up on the halfway mark for the third period of our final Friday night game of the year. Friday night ice, as you say. Got some good ones next year, Jeff. Got some good ones next year. Can you tell us about them? Or is it still top books. secret yet? I got, a, I got two in the books that I can announce right now. We have... Uh, Hibbing will host Hermantown at the Memorial Building oh. in Hibbing, <laughs> Minnesota next year. Yes. It's a good one, right? Yeah. And then we have uh, inner city rivalry between, uh, inner, inner building rivalry between Park Cottage Grove and Eastridge. They oh, share the same building over there in Cottage Grove. So huh. a nice little rivalry between those two coaching staffs and players. As Rand plays it in with eight minutes to go, I will say, uh, the Memorial Building remains my single favorite building to call a game from. 
There is the a the second ice. best rink in the state. Pardon? It's the best rink, and there's the second best. There, I don't know. There, <laughs> it's only a competition for the second best because that's you know that not I, up for discussion. The old Section Seven Championship game up there was always my favorite night of the year when I was Talk way back when I was young and stupid as you opposed to about old and stupid. Friday night Iron Range Conference yep. games. I played in several of those. Yes. Three of them to be exact. Yes. Uh, my Minneapolis Southwest teams would play Greenway Coleraine every Friday night, and then we'd play Rapids on Saturday night. Mm. What a treat. Great trip. Here's a shot, and it's loose at the right edge. Centering pass, follow-up shot, and nothing doing there. Good chance for Stewart, but he was not able to solve the goaltender. Comes to the right side, and Geiger, Ben Geiger, trying to get a shot away, and it's just a mass of gold shirts. Finally, it's picked up and cleared out to center. It's going to come back into the Northfield zone. Ben Geiger chasing it down behind the net. Leaves it there for Frank. And then Frank sidesteps the four checker. Petrosky and comes around to the opposite side. 7-10 to go. And Northfield will start back. Pass is too far for Munson at center and then played back in. O'Neill going after it. And he will get there. O'Neill leaves it for uh, Petrosky in the circle, excuse me, as it comes off to the near side boards. And trying to step around to check his cash in there. Now, he does pick it up and starts back for Northfield. At center, Cashin plays it ahead, and here's Stewart closing in. He's tied up from behind by the defender, Gebhardt. And now back out they come, and here's Hirschfeld down the wing. Comes over the line and then plays it to the right of the goal against Riley, centers it, and the carom comes out to center ice. As Hirschfeld came in, he's just skated backwards and then just went right back onto his forehand just to say that he could do it, I suppose, as it's cleared Rink wide into the Northfield zone and Riley behind the net. I talked, to, I talked to Hirschfeld's dad between the periods and he said he's hurting. He's got a hobbled leg. I go, it definitely shows. He barely has any speed out there tonight. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm like, wow, I hate to see him 100%. You know what, though? If he's got that, uh, you know, Joe Garagiola once said to the player when he, when he was injured that would do something great, and he said it looked like he just came back from Lords. And, yes. uh, and that, was, that would describe... Hirschfeld, I think, perfectly is great speed. Here's Kaiser over the line. 5.49 to go, plays it ahead, and then has his story ended as the Crusaders Sturm plays it back into the Northfield zone. It feels like the clock is ticking two seconds per second for Northfield right now. Just going way too fast to make yeah. a comeback. And now it's in their zone and cleared behind the net by Jake Geiger over to the far side, and finally two center ice as Winter. Plays it ahead, and now Cathedral will rink wide, and it's going to come all the way back into the Northfield zone, and no icing there. So Northfield, buzzard's bad luck. Can't kill nothing. Nothing won't die as it comes over to the far wall. And That's now, a euphemism I heard a long time. <laughs> wow. Here is Kaiser. That's offside on the left as two players got tangled up. Oliver Benjamin was one, and I think the other was, let's see now. I think it was Wong. But now we're going to get a timeout with 5.04 to play. 4-1, the score here on Friday Night Ice. It's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business partners, and great nonprofits as well uh, who we seek to benefit. I just think of partnerships. I think uh, all the ways that there's collaboration and work together, and whether that's you know helping out customers who need financing, whether that's helping customers find the right home, whatever it is. I just think of all these different things that we're helping out the community with. And that can be customers, that can be nonprofits, all those different partnerships that we have. Many people think that there's nothing that can be done for their back and their neck pain. But in fact, there's a, a wide range of non-surgical treatment options for many different problems. And our goal is to get people to the right treatment as quickly as possible. And that's why we offer same-day appointments. Because if you're in pain and you're limited, waiting a week, waiting three months for an appointment is unacceptable. 5.04 to play in the third period here from Bloomington Ice Garden as we Bring down the curtain on Friday Night Ice for this year. As I work tonight's game with my employer, Mr. Tony Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so official. <laughs> well, if you tell me you don't come back, I can't come. So. Oh, you're always welcome here. Always welcome here. 
Here's a centering pass that is broken up before it can get to Munson. And now Cathedral will clear off the wall to center. Bouncing puck, and it's going to be picked up by Ben Geiger. And he swerves to get around the forecheck of Johnson. Around to the near side, and here's Frank. You and, I, you and I are very similar age. The puck play off glass is so much different than yeah. back in the 80s. Well, the glass is higher, for one thing. Yeah, yeah, You know, you're true. not taking your life in your hands if you're trying to you know, play it Stick off the... Stick work is just way more efficient, yeah. too. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't have half the hands that these guys had. We play with a wood stick. It just, not as much you could do. They're so much more dangerous now. Yeah. Like that puck bounced over Frank's stick. That never happened back in the day. Yeah. Have you been on the ice? I mean, is it is it is the warm weather doing anything to it, or is it is it? Uh, no, it seems good. It seems really good. Okay, well, I mean, a bouncing puck can be for a lot of yeah reasons. Here's Gillespie over the line, by the way, and then he trips over the hash mark and falls down. Now it's picked up there by Kaiser, rink wide to center ice, and here comes Northfield. Winter over the line, and he runs into a brick wall named Rosencrans, and down he goes. Now it's played to the blue line, and finally out to center and. Northfield will regroup with four minutes to play. Here over the line comes Jake Geiger. Leaves it to the right for Kaiser. He throws it in front. Wrap around the tip. And oh, how did that stay out of the goal? My goodness me. Now picked up by Rosencrans on the board. and Body starting to fly. That's just the second shot of the period for Northfield, by the way. Their first one wound up going into the net. How did that go in? I don't know. What I a save know. by Hanson. He's had a couple highlight reels today. Now, Northfield again, three and a half to go as Riley plays it to center ice. Gillespie now will play it on the right side. And that's Dwinnell with it along the boards. Tried to sweep it in front, picked up, and now Northfield will start back. And here's Cashin over the line, trying to split the defense, and down he goes. Now picked up by Northfield's Munson behind the goal, trying to find somebody open in front as Cashin goes down behind the goal. Players from both teams in, cleared off to the far boards and Rand now to the left point. Cleared over to the near side, just over three minutes to go. Boardman shoots and that uh, is turned away. Now loose at the right edge and Munson banks it to the left point. Rand over to the near side, Boardman shooting, save made. And the puck picked up there by O'Neill. Tries to clear up and can't break the blue line. Now Boardman battling him along the boards and it winds up to the left of the goal where Rosencrans plays it around behind the net. And that's intercepted in the slot, they score! Cam Kaiser, bar down with 2.34 to go and it's four to two. We got ourselves a game now. That clock was their enemy this entire period. And now 2.34 to go. It's four to two on the scoreboard, but everybody in this building knows it's really three to two because of that gift of a goal at the end of the second period. Yeah, that was a great effort by Kaiser. And it's now four to two with 2.34 to go, and they're gonna get the timeout taken by Northfield. I could see a goaltender being pulled here. Oh, immediately. In the offensive you have to zone. immediately yeah. pull a goalie. Yep, so. Let's see. And you'll see, and you'll see Munson on the ice for sure. I, I really love. I've seen a lot out of this Cashin kid today. He's got a, he's got a sneaky second gear to him. He can get out and get going really quick, and they can put things in the net too. Kaiser's goal being announced now. Munson and Stewart getting assists on the goal for Kaiser, 25th goal of the season, second of the night. Both his team's goals. As you look there at the Northfield bench. And if they can get a quick one, my, mm. you might have uh, a wild and woolly finish. What was that uh, Alcoa? Uh, what was the Alcoa Fantastic Finishes? Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> For football? Yeah, uh, that's right. Be an Alcoa Fantastic that's, Finish. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. It dates both of us, isn't it? <laughs> what does Alcoa even mean? <laughs> You're talking about something. Aluminum old Company friend? of America. Yeah. That's what good. Alcoa stands for. You get a gold star. Thank on you. Paper today. Thank you. So. I am the, the master of useless information. That was you hadn't impressive. noticed that. <laughs> now we've completely bored our audience to death with useless We facts. got something to talk about during the timeout, right? So, yeah. Well, we got two minutes, 34 seconds for Northfield to make something very special happen, but they have scored a second goal. They yeah. played better in the third period. They keep Winter out there, which means, guys, that means Munson will come on the ice once they pull the goalie. 
And here is Frank. But now uh -oh. Frank gave it away and a chance in front. Oh, boy, as Gillespie came in, and I'm sure Frank saw his life flash before his eyes there as Gillespie feeds it down in the circle, and here's a chance for Hirschfeld. He puts it wide. Now Hayward playing it down, and it comes out to center, and that will, of course, will they even keep get the, the goaltender goalie out? in. Will they even get the goalie out? Well, you got to get him out right now. you got to get him out. Ben Geiger in the corner around to the near side, and it's banked to Kaiser. That's going to get into the zone. It's going to come on to the goaltender. And, oh, a diving in for Northfield was Winter. They get the stoppage, and they have an offensive zone faceoff with a minute 54 to go. I can't believe the goalie's not already out of the net. It looks like Coach Lovecraft is uh, going with the extra safe. Waiting for the puck to get possessed before he pulls the goaltender out. Which I'm not a fan of. You can't get the puck unless you got the extra attacker. But. Comes to the near boards from the faceoff. And Cathedral will break rink wide. Sturm into center. Plays it in. And that's now icing. icing. And now you can take him with 142 nope. to go, I expect. He's not going to. He's not, he's, not gonna he's not even looking at the goalie right now. They're not even looking at him. He's just lonely down there. Well, it's not quite Vladimir Mishkin. But uh, the goaltender's still in. Ooh, that's a big hit against the boards. And that's going to be a penalty. So now you don't need to pull the goaltender. With a minute I, I 38 to go. We could play six on four, yes. But And it is going to be Gebhardt the third straight penalty that he has taken tonight. And it comes with 138 to go. So 15-22. The time now the goaltender comes out and they play six on four, but the puck comes right on to the goaltender Hansen for a stoppage. Goalie coming out. He's leaving the goalie in. Well, he had come to the bench I know. before, but... Now it's loose from the faceoff and comes over to the far side. Goaltender halfway. Now he comes to the bench. And the puck winds up going back out to center ice. So they got to track it down. And Frank will come back with the empty net and six skaters for Northfield. Pass to the far side. And over the line comes Munson. He goes down. Another penalty coming. And that is going to make it a six on three situation. Do you put the goalie back in? No, keep him out. Okay. You gotta, you get, they need the puck. Yeah, they do need 12, the puck. That's true. They need the puck. I've never been a fan of waiting till you get the puck. The only way you get the puck is to have that extra attacker. See if they can bury one here. Well, they have a six on three advantage, and it comes at 1548 of the third period. Well, if it's never been a better time than the present here for them. As now behind the net, Northfield gets possession, the centering pass, loose in front, whacking away at it, and with one minute to go, somehow that puck stayed out of the net. In? That's incredible. Unbelievable. So now here's Frank, ringing the net, pass to the left, it's off a skate, and now Munson can't play it in. Frank has to come back for it. Six against three. Frank over the line, 40 seconds to go, trying to center, and it deflects off towards the right point. Played there by Geiger, and now out to center, and it is going to be shot just wide of the empty net by Hirschfeld. With 30 seconds to go, he goes to the boards with Frank, and now behind the net, Munson picks it up in the left corner with 23 seconds to go. Now Ben Geiger, pass to the right, Cashin over the line. And he winds up losing possession. It's cleared all the way back with 14 seconds to go. And Cathedral is going to dodge a major bullet here in the last moments. 10 seconds to go. Cashin feeds it to the left. Loose in the center circle. And just wide of the empty net by Hirschfeld as the game comes to an end. And our final score tonight is St. Cloud Cathedral 4 and Northfield 2. They wind up with nine shots in the third period, Northfield does, for a game total of 21. And five shots in the third period for Cathedral for a game total of 33. And the final score is 4-2. to two. Well, it wasn't boring, that's no, for sure. Not at all. 
Holy smokes, what a finish. It was wild as Cathedral got in some penalty trouble at the end of the game, and boy, that scrambler on the front of the net with about there 45 a seconds to go. Guy boy, that was a wraparound, I still don't know how it went in, and then they had a, a rebound in front, I still don't know how they stopped that puck. Yep. What an incredible finish. Well, I'll get the player of the game. And it's John Hirschfeld, and that's deserving. I he, very impressed. He, with I don't him. know what his stat line was. I, it may there may be someone with a better stat line, but nobody had a greater impact on the game than Johnny Hirschfeld tonight. Now he had a goal and an assist, but still, control play whenever he was out there. And uh, our Kristen Kroll is going to be talking with him momentarily, as uh, the handshake line finishes up. Northfield loses for the first time since November 28th. And they go to 13-2-2, two two. St. Cloud Cathedral 15 wins, four losses, and one tie. And, uh, and like good Catholics, the, uh, they're going to pray a little bit before Kirsten Krall can get the uh, interview in. We'll, we'll buy a little bit of time, Jeff. Two vociferous young men like us, we can <laughs> spill some time, don't you think? I am only slightly younger than Keith Richards. Who's know. older between you and I? Uh, I don't know. Graduated what year? 83. Ah, you got me. I was a freshman when you were a senior. Really? I'm a well, young pup. All right, well, I will uh, I will turn 59 years old in June. Yeah, I'm 56, so, so they'll, they'll pray it out here. Kirsten Crow will take it down to her in just a minute. Yep. Johnny Hirschfeld probably doesn't even know. He's such a humble young man. No, he knows. He's fixing his hair. He'll be <laughs> fixing it here really quick. With uh, with Kirsten Kroll. All we'll right, take it down to her in just a minute. I am down on the ice with our Youth Hockey Hub player of the game, John Hirschfeld. John, you and your team hang on in the final minutes of this game to get the 4-2 win. What do you like about the way your team were able to hang on? Uh, we got pucks out, ate a lot of pucks. Our goalie made great saves at the end, so that really helped us win the game. And what stands out to you most about how you and your team came together to get the job done tonight? Uh, we really just all played a good game, played good defense, and got pucks out, like I said before, and really just got the job done. And a goal and an assist here for you tonight. What do you attribute to your personal play? Uh, just 200-foot game, and I'm going to work hard every game. Well, thank you so much for your time, and congratulations on the win. All right, thank you. I'll send it back up to you guys. Uh, we talked about him as being humble. It was shown yes. right there, a humble, humble young man. Uh, knows he's a good player. He plays with a lot of confidence. And uh, like we talked about earlier, he, he just made things happen all night long from first yeah. shift to end. He did. And, you know, I guess a question that, that I would have loved to hear him answer would be what he sees his own role as in this team. <laughs> I mean, because he is a modest young man, right? That sure. guy does everything but <laughs> sell the French fries at the Municipal <laughs> Athletic <laughs> He does. He does everything there. And if he was selling them, I'd buy them. Those are some right, well, good French fries at the yes. back. But uh, at, at the same time, though, I'd be curious to know, because that line is so good, and their interplay between or among the three of them is so good, I'd be curious to know. But uh, the answer that I expect I would get would just be do whatever it takes to win the, win the game. Which, and they did it tonight. And they sure did. Sure. Boy, That's they played sure. well. I'm very impressed with this team. And uh, having seen them play for the first time tonight, uh, they are going to be a team to be reckoned with. I will say doubt. this, signing off on the regular broadcast, we'll go to the post game as well. I'll say this now. This team is, both of these teams, are poised for a run at the state tournament. I think you could see these two teams play in the first round of the state tournament. Now, because Cathedral's punched their ticket to the top four, and losing to Cathedral, uh, Northfield won't have another chance to, to make a case in the uh what are they called? In the seating meeting? In the they seating have no meeting. case that they're going to be an yeah. unseated team, and they know that after losing tonight. Yep. Well, then it's the luck of the draw after that, and so we'll see how that works out. But 4-2 uh, the final score, so we'll get to the post game, and it just remains for me to say thank you again for fun time. Thanks for being time. here, Jeff. You do an awesome job through thick and thin. You're our guy. All righty. Well, I get to the post game show, 4-2 the final score. Coming up next. For me. Hard work and dedication to my sport are what matter most. My likes and thumbs up come from the success of my team, the cheers from the fans, and the approval from my coaches. I aim to see the bigger picture and be a leader. My name is Gavin Gary, and I play for the Minnetonka Skippers. Proudly made in the USA. 
for me, hard work and dedication to my sport are what matter most. For me, it's a network of great clients, great shareholders, great business. At Hammermade, our Made You Look shirts aren't just superior, they also make getting dressed easy. We favor smart design over passing trends, so your look stays timeless and on point. Season after season, we make the perfect shirt for every day of the week and commitment on your calendar. During this time of year, make sure your loved ones are unwrapping Hammermade. I think a force for good is kind of just what it sounds like. We, we wake up every day, go to work, try to do the best we can, but also have in the back of our head that we're gonna help people and, and try to make a difference in people's lives. While it's important to do things for others, it's how you go about doing that day in and day out. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about one team. I don't care who you are in this company. Everybody has an opportunity to make a difference and contribute to the whole piece of the pie of what we're trying to do. Stress fractures in the foot. Generally, the pain is on the top of the foot. There may or may not be much in the way of swelling, but there's usually tenderness, meaning that if you push on the area, it is sore to touch. So if you've had a change in activity, been doing a little bit more and developed pain that hurts when you walk or certainly hurts more when you try to run on it, that's concerning for a stress fracture. Sometimes those can be seen on x-ray, sometimes it requires an MRI to decide whether or not there is a stress fracture. How do we do it? When we step out on the ice, is it just because we're told to? No, we keep working hard and working together giving 110 at practice and 120 on game day. Struggling to overcome and never giving up. We know the jersey matters. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lots of Matza Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lots of Matza Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. Cloud Cathedral 4, Northfield 2. The Crusaders disrupt the Raiders' seven-game win streak, but not without some controversy and a little bit of fireworks on the ice in the third period, Tony Scott. No, no question about it. There was a, a couple, there was one goal, according to our podcaster, Danny Ryan, said the puck went in and went out. So at 4-2, it could have been a 4-3. You factor in the goal in the end of the period, in the second period, scored by uh, Gillespie, and it could be a much different story here at the end than, than the actual 4-2 final. Yeah, Cam Kaiser scoring twice in the third period for Northfield. What did you notice is the difference between the first and second periods where it was all Cathedral to the third period where the Raiders started to get some juice? Well, desperation does a lot to a team, and they were des <laughs> definitely desperate, but they got confident after Kaiser's first goal. They picked up a little bit more confidence after the second goal with 2.34 to go, mm -hmm. and then you could see the penalties. You could see the, the way they played in the final 2.34. They played with purpose. They were passing the puck around. I talked about it several times in the broadcast tonight. When when Northfield starts zipping around and hitting, connecting on their passes, they were outstanding. There were a few plays right here in the last couple minutes where they were off the mark on their passes. If they can improve their passing game, this is a dangerous team come state tournament time. All right, two goals for Joey Gillespie, one for John Hirschfeld, and one for Andrew Duenell for the Crusaders. John Hirschfeld named our player of the game with one goal, one assist, and Tony, he was all over the ice tonight. And that's the reason we named I mean, I, I said I... I was the one who called it down to Robin Cook, and I said, I don't know if his stat line's as good as Gillespie or Duenell's, mm -hmm. but his tenaciousness on all 200 feet of the ice, or you call it, Jeff called his name a million times tonight. Mm -hmm. He just changes the game. From, from the first shift to the end, it was all John Hirschfeld. I don't care what his stat line was. The way he changed the game with his tenacity is what made him the player of the game tonight. I was going to say tenacity, I believe, is the word you're looking for outside of uh, tenaciousness. Should not go unnoted. Nick Hansen with 19 excellent saves for the Crusaders. Max Frank with 29 stops for the Raiders. Thoughts going forward for these two teams, Tony. We fully expect both of them to make a run towards the Class A state tournament. What has to happen for each to make that a reality? 
If I'm St. Cloud Theater, don't change a thing. They got their goaltender back. A lot of their losses have come at, at, since losing Hanson. Now All he's four back. of them. Yeah. So I say now that he's back, keep your hand on the plow, keep practicing, keep doing what you do. I think this team is poised for a Friday appearance in the state tournament. And for Northfield, it's quite easy. You, They saw that they can play. If they play the way they did in the third period, they know that they can win one of those, that, that Wednesday game. They came so, so close last year, losing to Orono in overtime. I think both teams, you could see both of these teams playing on Friday and cross our fingers that they play each other and get a rematch from tonight's game. Boy, what a game would that be in the state tournament, seeing Northfield play St. Cloud Cathedral again. We will be back after a word from our sponsor with tonight's scoreboard show and a bit of a wrap up. My likes and thumbs up come from the success of my team, the cheers from the fans, and the approval from my coaches. I aim to see the bigger picture and be a leader. My name is Gavin Gary and I play for the Minnetonka Skippers. Proudly made in the USA. At Hammermaid, our Made You Look shirts aren't just superior, they also make getting dressed easy. We favor smart design over passing trends, so your look stays timeless and on point. Season after season, we make the perfect shirt for every day of the week and commitment on your calendar. During this time of year, make sure your loved ones are unwrapping Hammermaid. I, I think we're here. I think all of the plugs have been plugged in, and I think everything has been turned on. Let's run through some scores from this evening away from Bloomington Ice Garden. These scores are as recent as 845 this evening. Boys High School Prairie Center over Wilmer, 3-2. to two. Thief River Falls over Greenway, 5-0. They're, They're hot. Thief River Falls, mm -hmm. watch out for the Prowlers within the next four or five seasons, folks. Red Lake Falls over International Falls, 9-2. to Battle two. of the Falls. Battle of the Falls. West Who had Falls the versus Falls? East Falls. <laughs> Girls High School, St. Cloud Crush over Thief River Falls, 4-3. Wyndham over Morris Benson, Area 5-2. Rozo over Sartell Sock Rapids, 4-1. In progress at time where I wrote this down, Mount West Tonka and Southwest Christian leading Delano Rockford. That's a top 10 Class A game. Leading Delano Rockford 3-2 to two as of 8.45. I'm sure that game is probably over by now. Grand Rapids Greenway tied with Alex 1-1. to one. score. And Two Rivers St. Paul tied with Park Cottage Grove 2-2 two to, two to do it for available scores for high school. And I know that St. Thomas Academy was leading Hermantown 2 to nothing after mm -hmm. 2 we have a correspondent up there, Ethan Andreessen. We do, don't we? Yes, we do. Ethan certainly earning his hourly rate and probably then some. We'll be in contact, Ethan. As for the <laughs> college men, Northern Michigan through two periods leading Minnesota State 2-1. to one. Through two periods, Minnesota Duluth leading Miami of Ohio 4-1. to one. St. Cloud State up on Omaha 2 to nothing mid-second period. And Michigan State the hangs shocker. on for a 3-2 victory over the University of Minnesota. They came back and Michigan State was trailing 2 nothing to start the third. At home, got three in the third to beat the Gophers, seven versus nine. A really good college hockey game. What a wonderful job by Adam Nightingale riding the ship in East absolutely. Lansing and getting some great performances out of some and transfers some like Isaac too. Howard, yes, who absolutely. I believe assisted on the game winner. As for the women, Wisconsin with a 2-1 win over Minnesota Duluth. Good showing for the Lady Bulldogs against arguably the country's top team. Minnesota edges Minnesota State 4-3. to three. A good showing again in a loss by Minnesota State hanging with the Golden Gophers. Ohio State 4-2 to two over St. Cloud State. Yet another, I would call it a decent loss by a Minnesota program, Correct. keeping yep. it close. And then St. Thomas and Bemidji State tie 2-2 two to two through overtime and through a shout-out. So the Tommies and the Beavers deadlock. Beavers only two wins on the year. They were that close to getting their third win. Very close to getting that third win. As for us, I think we're done. I can't think of anything else to say. The scoreboard is off. The guys are cleaning up the popcorn. It sounds like it's time for us to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the Friday Night Ice team. It's been a wonderful season, and we'll see you around the rink. Hockey's a very unique sport. I would say it, it has this blend of of toughness and athleticism, but by and large, um, you know, really creativity. 
you have lots of great athletes, but you don't have lots of great hockey players. And the biggest separator is what they call hockey IQ or intelligence. And that's the ability to really process information quickly, make decisions. IT band, patellofemoral, stress fractures, and plantar fasciitis are probably the biggest running issues that we see. And I think that depending on the runner, if it's someone who's a really seasoned runner, has you know, been a runner their whole life, it could be as simple as a shoe change. And that's enough me, of a subtle... Hard work and dedication to my sport are what matter most. My likes and thumbs up come from the success of my team, the cheers from the fans, and the approval from my coaches. I aim to see the bigger picture and be a leader. My name is Gavin Gary, and I play for the Minnetonka Skippers. Proudly made in the USA.